They don't know what Travis, what kind of Travis they're going to get tonight. They don't. I don't, do even, they? I don't even fucking know. I know. You drank the I wine early, know. man. I wonder if they can hear me. I, You know, I think they can. I think I watched cool. one of the shows and they're listening right now to what we're saying. Pretty cool. Good evening. Good evening. What's up, everybody? Come on Keep now. It Keep it down. Yeah. Big show lined up. I don't even know what's going on. I just got a text message from BTC. Now he's like, there's more than one secret guest. Two. Count them two mystery <sighs> guests in the same night. What? Hmm. That's uh, I And we don't know, honestly. I, I have no clue. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we got a captain that's going to join us as well. Captain and Scooter Lily. Alex is lurking in the backgrounds under the dock right now, just waiting for that Senko to come skipping under. Like a Senko lunker. And so we have a lot to cover tonight. I don't want to rush you guys, but I am going to rush you guys because BTC is rushing me because of the guest and the fact that I want to get everybody their moment of fame. But first, Eric, I think we need to... I think we need to show our appreciation and the support from last Saturday's Patreon. Uh, you guys that came bro. on, uh, that paid your lousy 10 bucks. Awesome. You rocked it, dude. We gave you your $10 worth. No, you knocked it out of the ballpark. Some people are asking if they can watch that. I, I think you might be able to. Anyways, you can go to my website or whatever, however you do it in the show links, Patreon, if you want to sign up. The next show is going to be February 18th, and I promise you it's going to be better than the first one. And that's all the, I can say. Or the sixth. Yes, Eric, if you looked in my show notes I sent out earlier oh, yeah. today, there was a change of schedule for a lot of things. In fact, let's just do that because part of the agenda tonight was to give you guys the schedule moving forward. Let's get into it. Next week, January 28th, BTC Fat Cat Newton, Thursday the 4th. I'm going to be in Wisconsin. Okay. So we're going to hopefully have good internet. We got Tackle HD and they have some cool baits. We're actually going to, sh I wouldn't bring a company out if I didn't think their stuff was legit. I busted up a huge sack on their swim baits back in November. And so I wanted to have him come on and talk about it. And then we're going to have Rick, the owner of Monster Bass, come on for 15, 20 minutes and talk about the Monster Bass. Of the month, because every first live show of the month, we do talk about that. February 11th, I'll be in Wisconsin again. Epic E, thank you, Grade 8, for the uh, the $1.99. Well, because he already paid his 10 so now he's, into, he's in for eleven ninety nine. if you think of it that way. He's in deep. He's, he's awesome, man. Hey, by the way, Sean, if, if Sean's on, maybe he's not on. He, normally he's on right by now. He's on. He was um, on earlier. After the live, dude drops me 20 bucks in my PayPal and is like, that was worth way more than $10. Wow. So thank you, Sean. I do appreciate that. The 25th, I'm sorry, the, the 11th, TK and Epic Eric have so a big announcement to make. That's going to be a good one. You going to be there, Eric, for that one? I, I'm going to post up heavy. Good, 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 he good. Heavy. February, the 18th, February 18th, of course, will be the Patreon. The 25th, we're going to be talking with the boys from PowerPole, a wild group of characters. We're going to just, uh, just hang out, chat with them. Perhaps Epic Eric will surprise us with a special guest since you're going to be down in Florida that week. I, I might have one or two in the mix. That's going to be pretty cool. March Hopefully 4th. It's the DD special guest. Ah. Uh, Mar March 4th. March 4th. Nico Bates. We got him. He's in. Nice. No show the week of the 8th because I think Eric and I are going fishing somewhere south. Mm hmm. Michael Simonton. 
bunch of guys coming up. Austin Neary, Falks Customs will be joining us at some point. Dem Jigs. So very good packed schedule. Let's move on. Next topic. I think I would like to start these live shows at 8 p.m. Eastern instead of 8.30. I do like Let the call, know. man. Especially me- since we've got some things happening before we get into the show, like the ads, like you know what we're about to talk about tonight with the monster bass. You got the TRS. No right? monster I mean, bass tonight, just TRS. It's just not TRS. the first time. But what I'm saying is, is you got preamble to the show now. So, you know, it's an extendo show before we bring on any special guests. Yes. So I think, I think that makes sense. Yeah, Let's hear well, what that, everybody says. Yeah, please let me know in the comments if you guys are okay with eight. The problem is BTC, I guess, is going to be the regular. He's almost the producer, the the mystery producer of the show, or, or I don't know what's going on. But yeah, he kind of, he kind lately, and he seems like he would be more of a night owl. But lately, he's been just complaining about these nine nine thirty spots I'm giving him, and I'm so cold. maybe he's a night maybe, wolf. Maybe light. if we start at eight o'clock, it'll take a little pressure off of him. He's like the Nordic Wolf Light. Yeah. You know, it's a beer. The Capitals used to come into my my brother's bar, man, and they would drink. They'd order Nordic Wolf Light. You ever drank a uh, Nordic Wolf Light? No. Eight. Everybody's like eight, 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 eight. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah I mean, settled. wow. All right. Take note. Um, People are saying you touch the mic a lot, man. Do you like touching that mic? I'll back off. I'll back just a, off. Just a little less handling. Of we that had a, uh, we have a, a major issue. Uh, and, and whenever you have issues like this coming into your life, it's just a headache. It's a hassle and it's not necessary. And I recently had an issue a, f- a number of years ago now where a, a, a person, a person I knew saw that I was, starting a YouTube channel, saw that I had a little bit of uh, people following the small mouth mm-hmm. crush name. Yeah. And he decided to buy my domain small mouth crush. And so when I decide, you know, I better just buy it. Not that I'm going to use it because I still don't use it to this day, but I bought, I go online. I try to buy smallmouthcrush.com, and somebody else bought it. You had a hizzy fit, dude. You went I literally did. ballistic. And so and we talked about domain squatting. I guided you in the right direction, what to do. And you prevailed. It took a while. You, you were know on, what? You were on the, literally a rampage. I've never the, seen you that. Angry. So I, I think I always wanted to be a detective or maybe a spy or, you know, something along that, that drives me. So when I found out, what little information I had. I knew the guy lived in New York. Uh, I dug deeper, man, consumed with it, but I enjoyed every minute of that chase until I found out the dude's name. Once I found out his name, we went to town. Cost me about $3,500 with lawyer fees and everything, but I wasn't going to give him a dime. And uh, I was able to get it. More importantly, we reconciled. I'll tell I'll give you that much. I, I did not bash him totally publicly. Okay. You wanted to. Oh, I think we talked about some serious stuff that we don't about, want to talk about here on the show. We talked about uh, yeah, I talked to you out of um a couple Thinking of things. Of, yeah, it might have involved concrete blocks and rope. I don't I'm just saying cement flippers. Like if you wear a size 10 shoe, it's usually an 11 and a cement flipper. I don't, I don't appreciate that kind of trickery. And when someone does that to me, first of all, it's illegal. You cannot domain squat. Right. And that's why their law is set up, but you got to go through a process. You, you, you and that's why I won the, that's why I won the suit. That's right. That's exactly right. But I'm not going to lie. It was very exciting. (laughs) <laughs> Jamie Newton said he would have fixed his knees for 1200 <laughs> <laughs> So just recently, guys, um, Epic Eric had the same encounter. Uh, his domain, of course, we know Epic's got his logo and 
he's starting to take a position in the uh i don't know what you call it either do i dude i'm just having the fun YouTube man That's why yeah. It, yeah he's got stickers for sale you know he wants to sell a couple three dollar stickers let the guy sell some damn freaking yeah. stickers and there you go we're he good. did release that on our last patreon and yeah. i think you might release it a little tonight as well if uh, mm -hmm. Alex can put that information down in the screen as far as how to get those stickers. You can just go straight to Epic Eric Official. There's a there's a website link to my big cartel web store. And the combo packs are up there. Single small sticker, big sticker, or combo pack. Just a buck shipping, which is it cost me more to ship. But anyway, yeah. man, I thought I'd get it out there. A lot of people wanted it. Come on. That's awesome. But here's the deal. So Eric wants to sell a couple $3 stickers. There's no need to go buy Epic Eric's Bass Lab .com on January 12th. You, you stupid, ignorant prick from Minnesota. Are they watching tonight? That's the I mystery. No, here's the are deal. They, Probably are the because they know this is, they're right. If they're watching, this is, this is thrilling because now gonna, they've heard right yeah, yeah, we're going to give you, we're actually going to give you the benefit of the doubt. You literally have 48 hours to either contact <laughs> myself or Eric, release the domain, release the. your name will not be pulled publicly and broadcasted to the fishing community about who you are. Mm. If you, if you do not comply, game on, <laughs> and we're going to enjoy every second of it. Travis, I think you'll enjoy it more, but I love seeing you get fired up. I was like. No big deal. Travis was like, no. Man, We're this getting is, this, dude. This is bogus. We're going to um, do it. Yeah, guys, I okay. have right, people. Man. I have some I have some people uh, working behind the scenes. Uh, we're going to we, we we have a very good idea. I'll be able to find out the name of the credit card, his transaction, what was used when he purchased that. Uh, once that's hey. done, we're setting it out there for everybody. So. Let us know in the comments what you want us to do. And let us know if you have any other ideas. Yeah. <laughs> what else can I say? And I think you've said it. You've laid the gauntlet down. You're going to work. And yeah. uh, it's going to be fascinating. You don't take kind to this kind of behavior. Neither do I, frankly. No. Um you know, it's it's not a really a critical domain because I've got the web store on the. Epic we could care less about the domain. It's the fact that you took the time of your day to do it. I mean, I'm just trying to get people some swag. No big deal. And we're going to come for you because I enjoy this part of it. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, we're done with that topic. OK, mm. Moving on. well, no, you got to move it quick tonight. OK, yes, that's right. That's right. Could do an extended play, but that's just going to push the the clock. Mm. Tick, tick, tick. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, we got to bring on a captain. Captain, you want to introduce him, Eric, since he's your team partner. Yeah, man, this is my yeah. team partner, Captain Scooter Lily. Are we doing the TRS thing yet? Oh shit! Hold on yeah, one second. Scooter, hold yeah. on. I got to. He's get not captain. even there, by the way. He's not even in front of the computer at this point. All right, because he said 850 and it's only um 744, 844. So we got time to do the TRS deal, right? Don't we do the Man, TRS? I hope so. Let's get into it. Right now. All right. Well, this this part of the show is brought to you by the Real Shot. If you go to the show notes and if you take a look at the description here, you're going to uh, get a link that's going to take you right there to talk about uh, or to purchase all these baits that we do talk about. And every time you do purchase from the Real Shot, you help out the channel, so we certainly appreciate that. And no, John Mango, I'm not boozing. I'm one glass of wine in. Thank you. Everybody think that we, that we coordinated the vest thing. No, I, normally you don't wear a freaking vest, and normally I don't no, this time I, of year. For reasons, I'm gonna bust it out. I was gonna. I'm trying to rep for Captain Scooter Lily. I kind of wanted him to be surprised. That's that's his okay. company, man. WW okay. and Sir Charles. So I'm taking it off because it's getting hot in the lab. I got the lights on, man. You know, Eric, I got the. 
I got the things brewing in the background. Yes. Sometimes lures make themselves down here. It's weird. Yes. That's what a lap can do for you. That's nah. right. Nah. Don't breathe in the fumes. I do. Listen, I don't know about you, but when I first started, are you done? I am. I don't know about you, Eric, but when I first started bass fishing around 07, 08, yeah. uh, one of the uh, major events, and I believe it was on Lake Oneida, Oneida Lake, uh, Dean Rojas won a, a big elite series event there on a frog. And that whole mm. two years prior basically blew up the frog scene. There was yep. never a, a, a real go-to frog, topwater frog back then that everybody had to have. There was a, a multiple array of different choices and everybody kind of had one that they favored over the other. And I think people were confused. But when Dean Rojas brought on the scene the spro frog hey we got the same color crazy crazy man blew it Hot. out of the water and i think everybody has owned that bass fishes has owned a spro frog at some point or the other and that's this Hot. week's tackle review tip of the week from the real shot you can go over there get these for 15 percent off right now if you use my code smallmouth crush 15 Alex, if you can put the website and the code in the show notes, that would be awesome in the comments there. But this was the first frog I bought, and it still Me works too. well. You know, the popping frog, the walking frog, there's different sizes, of course. I'm just going to tell you straight up, Rohim, I do love this frog. It's an adequate frog. If you're wondering where to start when you're frog fishing, this is a very good choice. Is there better frogs on the market? Maybe for different applications. Is there worse frogs? Certainly. One thing I like about this frog is for me, if I'm trying to pitch that frog underneath, say, a willow tree or a dock, this frog skips wonderful for me. It has a very good hookup, and I probably caught more fish on this frog, this Spro Frog brand, than any other brand out there. And I'd I own a lot of them. Gamakatsu hooks. Gamakatsu hooks. Gamakatsu mm -hmm. hooks. Is there anything else to say? Sharpest hook in the game, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do Definitely. you mod yours in any way? I mean, like if you're getting a Spro bronze eye, is there anything special? You just fish it straight out of the pack. You certainly can, but I like to just take those hooks and bend them up <laughs> just ever so slightly, not a whole lot. Slightly. So the hook point is doing that. Mm -hmm. That. Not above the plastic. So when you get in the slop, you get come back with slop. But you want those hook points just tipped up slightly. It'll increase your hookup. Here's another tip for you. Buy yourself either some steel ball bearings. The guy on, on um, the last Bassmaster Elite guy, he threw two one eighth ounce tungsten weights in his frog. And especially if you're fishing heavy slop, it weights the frog down, makes an impression in the mat. And when the fish goes to blow the frog and, and make you know bite it, it doesn't blow the frog up. It gives, you know, it holds it down. So you're you're really creating more of a disturbance on top of the mat. So there's a couple of tips. You can also use BBs. That's really yeah. instead of eight pounds tungsten. Um, you can put like three BBs in. That's always a nice little rattle for open water frog fishing. Five mm -hmm. or six will start to really make an impression. If you put anything more than 10, um, dang, you know, it'll sink like a rock. Yeah. But heavy slop. Switch and listen. Do. Uh, BBs, BBs are are actually hard to come by right now too. Believe it or not. Um, what? So if you're gonna, yeah. Why? Because the copper? Because like they stopped manufacturing? I don't know. They're just hard to find in stores. Uh, really I remember strange. last last summer I was trying to find some. I'm just saying, be be ready to have some BBs if you're looking at going fishing and trying this technique next summer yeah. because I utilize this quite a bit in those heavy mats and I had yeah. a hard time when I was up on the St. Lawrence River. I had a, a really good frog bite. And the mats were so thick that mm -hmm. I needed some extra weight. Um, I had actually that, I put you some. You could use your tungsten. You could use your tungsten. I did that, yes. But I like the the whole BB deal. It's yeah. it's easy for me to just stick them inside there without. You know how I'm not going to take this out of the box. Yeah, I could yeah. show you if I did. Yeah, but some you, you actually also wrap lead the lead tape. So if you're out of BBs and you don't like to use your tungsten. You know, then get yourself some of that lead tape that I always show on the show, and I'll show it again. Um, mm -hmm. You can wrap it right around the hook shank and achieve the same thing, and um, you know, no no problem in hooking. So it's this, yeah. 
It's the tennis racket lead tape. It's super cheap. And you ah. can put it on your drink baits, your frogs. Guys, that's another great tip for you. And FYI. you can throw these frogs a mile, dude. And for real, if you're if you're into skipping and, and flipping, like I, I'm just thinking back in a lot of buys of water that I fish, we have a lot of willow trees that lay over, especially late summer. And those bass, those big large mouth that get up underneath those. And yeah. this is probably one of the best frogs to be I think able it's to do. Frog. I really do. Because of that deep, that deep belly, you're you're spot on with that, dude. That I now think you it take is now here, here's just a real quick tip. Um, yeah. if you put a little scent on here, and I'll use like a Z bait scent and I'll mm -hmm. rub it all over that frog, not yeah. so much on the tails, but I'll rub it on the body and especially underneath, and you'll see it actually kind of repels water a little bit. I think it gives a little more more. It, it doesn't get hung up on that initial pitch, if you will. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. So certainly and, um, try that. And you, I mean, you could I mean, use Vaseline or, or oil on it too. But yeah, there's a there's a plus and a minus side of that. A lot of guys, you know, like when you put a wet frog back in your box, they that these tails can stick together. And a lot of guys will use baby powder or just straight talc um, to keep you know their frogs' tails really really crispy. But if your if your tails you know, you could do a video on that too, or I could, um, you know, uh, changing out a frog tail guys. I've, I've taken yeah. the frog tails out and used a Magnum zonker strip. Hey, uh, yeah, that, that would be a really that's good awesome, video. dude. I that's that's a mod this and it fits really hey, nice. That reminds me those, uh, yeah. if you watch my Patreon, we talked about that trailer by Z man. Mm -hmm. And if you took those two trailers and super glued it here, I got mm -hmm. a bunch of frogs with plastic legs instead of these strands. Mm -hmm. um, that certainly works as well. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts cool. of ways to mount this baby. Boom. There's your spro frog. Very yeah. Nice. Um, and, and you guys can color it with a Sharpie on the bottom too. Um, if you, you know, if you don't like just a straight white belly, you can put little frog marks. You can get yourself a brown Sharpie. Uh, you know, some guys like to do that to break up that big straight white. Uh, you could use sometimes yeah. your your scent markers will put a little ruby throat or an orange throat. You know, like if you've got like heavy bluegill going on, you know, you can put some of that orange throat for like a spawning bluegill. It, it, it can make a difference, man. You know, but you know, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that's the quick tackle tip review or tackle tip of the week from the real shot you guys can head over there again smallmouth crush 15 get 15 percent off your order buy these frogs and buy all kinds of stuff there that just helps the channel out let me know in the comments if you did go over there and purchase i'd love to hear from you hey if is it just the 15 percent off the spawns i mean no the, it's the, whatever they put in their cart i'm not supposed to do it okay. but if you guys want oh, i don't know how long they're gonna let me do that yeah wow. it was originally designed for what we're talking about Right. But, but if it's, a, you know, because this is there, summer, there's a, a summer. glitch. There's a glitch in the system. Take advantage of it now. Buy all the tungsten you can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a Black Friday sale for everything. Every week, Small Mouth Crush 15. Let's get into it because we are three minutes behind now. That's not too shabby. I'm just going to pop the dude in. <laughs> pop him in. <laughs> and there <he> <laughs> I'm in. Hey, hey, Scoot. Hey, Travis. We got a little. From one captain to another captain. I want to thank you for having me on tonight. First of all, we'll get into that, Captain. There's a little you, bit of echo on your end. Do you have headphones or anything, or is there another device you're playing this so you can uh, maybe mute one? You got to mute uh, your phone. What do you want? Am I am I doing something wrong here? Mute your phone. Yeah, mute your phone. If you're listening to the show on your phone, mute your phone. That will help. I'm not listening to it on my phone. Okay. I think anyway, it sounds better. Scooter Lily, one of the best captains south of... He I can't get it out. Eric south America. Sun, man. It's it's that way. way. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He, he said one of the best captains south... I'm still hearing something. What am I hearing? With the echo from Scoot. Listen, it's not man. me. I've been quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry. So our volume coming through your end is what people are yes. picking up. Yeah. 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 You got ear. Can you put some earbuds in? Yep. Yeah. That'd nice. be awesome. Somewhere. All right. You go do your thing. We'll be right back. We'll try back. this again shortly.
Eric, how long have you known Scooter? Man, it's coming up on this will be the fourth year, dude. Four years? That's it? Going yeah. It I thought you guys long. known each other for years. No, man. Like, so you're ditching no. you're ditching tournaments with me for some dude you met four years ago. How long have I known you? Not much longer. I'm just saying. How we doing, Scooter? Uh look at that. All right. Wait, can we hear him? I don't know yet. We got to plug it in. Hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> Where do you get a device like that? I like it, man. That's his son. He's a nainer. He's a nainer. All right. You in? Are you plugged uh, in? Much better. Much better. Yeah. Can you hear us now? Captain? He can't oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Dude, this uh, is so much better. Now we're set. Now we now we can move forward with the show. Scooter, I didn't know you guys only knew each other for four years. Yeah, just four years. How'd you guys meet? Oh, that's a good story. Uh you want you want I'll tell my version and then Scooter can tell his perspective. Mm. <laughs> Tackle All right. got the Call of Duty headphones on, man. <laughs> oh god, yes, that's exactly right. That's what they are. That's what they yeah, are. Yeah. All, right. All right. All right, man. So I'm fishing. Gamer. I'm fishing region seven down to the Carolinas, which is, is new to me at this point. Right. And it's going to be my first tournament with Brian Breesmeister in region seven on the Chowan River. So I'm already down at a hotel and Brian texts me on a Thursday night and go, man, I've got a bass tournament. I mean, he's got work conflicting. So he can't pre-practice with me. So I'm like, I'm down in Carolina and I go, what am I going to do tomorrow? I'm not driving back to get my Skeeter five and a half hours and come all the way back. So I call up, there's no rules against using a guide. So I call up three guides and uh, I see Scooter's website and it kind of looks like he's a hunting dude. Maybe he's a saltwater guy, but I'm like, I don't care. I'll go catch some rockfish or whatever. I just want to go fishing. And so uh, two guys call me back. Scooter's one of them. I really liked how Scooter sound on the phone. I'm like, man, let's do it. He goes, but listen. I don't have my bass boat. It's in the shop. I got a center console with a T-top. If you don't mind, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. And I'm like, man, that's kind of jank, but I'm, I'm, I'm in. I just want to go fishing. So, <laughs> so he goes, meet me at the 17 bridge. So I roll up to the 17 bridge. Here comes the T-top. It's a, it's a Key West, right? T-top. Yep. Yeah, yeah. T-top, Key West. It's in the heat of the summer. I got 17 rods. It's huge backpack of lures. You know, we get right into it. I like him instantly. And uh, I'm showing him a few things. I'm talking 100 miles an hour. And he goes, well, listen, that's all really nice. And uh, you got some pretty lures right there. But he goes, uh, <laughs> I only brought three rods. And he goes, but I'm probably only going to use two. And I'm like, three rods? And he might only use two. He goes, I got this one. It's won me a lot of money on, on this river. But I'm probably not going to throw it. But I got some. I got two packs of shaky head worms, some shaky head to go with them. And uh, a popper. And true to form, my man only used two rods and whacked them. He's running the boat in about 15 mile an hour wind with a control. He's with an eye pilot. With an eye pilot. Eye pilot. Dock like a champion. And I'm like, he's skipping braid. And I'm like, he ain't going to get a bite with that braid under that dock. Sure, he did. He goes, listen, man, it probably won't happen until about noon. And it didn't. But then it did. And he goes, uh, everything he called was just ridiculous. And at the end of the day, I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to pull out a drop shot just to see. And there he was. I didn't think it was a bass. It was about as long as a gar. <laughs> and big scooter goes, no, nah, man, that's a skinny sound fish. It's a giant. So it was about seven and seven and change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. A seven. It was a seven plus. All right. And I looked at him and I said, how many have we caught today? I said, ain't you ready to quit? You got a tournament tomorrow. Mm -mm. I want to. Like, I, I, I reckon we'll quit, but I mean, it was time to quit. You had 25 plus pounds. It was time to quit. It was a great day, man. Yeah, it was a good day. 17 waters, 115 degree heat index, it seemed like. But I oh, it was. It was 110 degree heat index. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank God for that T top. So you ain't lying. <laughs> yeah, that's how we met. That's how we met. So, Scooter, yeah. what was your perspective when I showed up, man? Oh, just another another jack leg coming to go fishing for a day. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, but I liked him. I mean, he had all this uh, 
you know, you know, everybody knows Eric. I mean, he's he's wide open, full of energy. It's, it, he's excited. You know, everything's going to happen. It's going to fire off. You know, we're going to catch him no matter what. And uh, that's the kind of vibe he gave me. And then uh, we weren't even in the water good yet. And he was asking me all these questions about what are we going to use? Why did you just bring this? And I, I'm sitting there telling him, uh, well, these are the baits I like to use. And I know when they're on it, I'm going to catch them. And it was the time of year to catch them on those lures. And he's like, well, do you throw a buzz bait? And I'm like, well, I kind of quit throwing a buzz bait because I can't find my chatter buzz that I used to love to throw. He's like, well, I know the guy that, that, that owns that. It's called Bassalon. And I'm like, what? And he's yeah. like, yeah. He's like, I can pull these out of my bag right now. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, no, man, I ain't seen that bait in, in at least five or six years. And he's like, I've got them. One of my very good friends I fish with, it has them. He's the one that makes them and produces them. And I said, you have got to be kidding me. So we didn't even get a fish in the boat yet. And I'm already wondering who this cat is. You know, he <laughs> showed you know, he's showing me baits that I that I knew about, but I didn't have. I mean, they're, they're kind of special run lures. He's throwing his boxes open because all I had was, yeah, there it is. There it is. There's oh, that buzz dude, bait. That Man, it. I tell you what, our river fish can't stand it. They can't. And, uh, and we were, they can't, they can't stand it. So, I mean, that was my bait of choice. So I pretty much had gotten away from it, you know, when those baits went off where I couldn't get. I mean, there's a few other baits I would try and catch a few fish on, but that bait really stood out. And uh, we we went on fishing, like I said, and, you know, he was showing me a few of these guy dollar nice crank baits. And I'm like, man, ain't none of them got no scratches on them. What's up with that? <laughs> He's like, I got a lot of them. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So we just kept fishing. But that's how we met. And then uh, the rascal, you know, eventually caught several behind me including a seven something of a croaker rig, which I mean, it's a, <laughs> I think it's a, a weight on the bottom with a, you replace the shrimp with a, with a little long piece of plastic and you shake it. That's what he calls it. I think that's what we catch croakers on. And, uh, and he catches that seven pound on that croaker rig. And I'm like, man, that's, a, that fish right there is stupid. But, but you know, we had a good time with it. And, uh, and ever since we've been fishing, it's been uh, if you just kind of let him play his own game, it, it kind of works out. Mm. So that's how yeah. we met, man. How about that? Mm -hmm. It was fate, dude. Fate. It was. It was strange. Yeah. Kind of like we how I met Travis. Travis yeah. it was a similar situation with Travis. Travis yeah, almost. Travis is up no. north. Tra Wait, he, yeah. he almost said no to me coming up and fishing on Lake Champlain with he was practicing for a tournament. Jack Rinkers, who he was working for at the time. Said Eric's going to watch a uh, yeah exactly watch a lacrosse tournament that my son was in and uh, take the dude out and Travis like nah and I told Jack <laughs> Man, slide, him, slide him some money and when the money you know Travis like okay and so I slid him a couple hundo and he took it he was he was thankful for it and I appreciated it he showed me a good time on Champlain we caught some really nice smallmouth and that was kind of it and look at the paths that have opened up that's by, right I mean it's incredible right my life changed. Right, because yeah. I would I wouldn't be on the stream if you didn't no. say yes, and no, I I would I would if I, I wouldn't have won this trophy in my opinion with with my captain Scooter Lily, had I not yeah. made those calls and he said yes, you know, yeah. yeah. I, and I, 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 first day hey. he wasn't sure he wanted to fish with me tournaments. I can promise you that he was still figuring me out and checking hey. me out. You didn't like, oh, like yeah. go fish tournaments together. You were yeah, still wondering you. about me. I'm a Yankee dude. <laughs> yeah, well. Now that you guys are partners, I'm kind of left with second strain, you know, anglers like BTC and shit taking 18th place on a regular basis on the Chesapeake Bay because Eric's not fishing with me anymore. So, yeah, there's a little bitterness around here, Captain. A little bitterness. <laughs> hey, wait, come back, come back, come back, Travis. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I want to talk Why? about there are two captains. Mm -hmm. You are a captain, but you've a, you've you've never scooter asked me. Yeah, don't call what? me a captain. Don't call me a captain. I mean, I mean, I was about I was about to change my Instagram name to Epic Eric's partner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean that's 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 where I felt like I was supposed to be at this point in time. I was Probably. Like, 
Man, I have worked a long time to get there. Let's, let's get there. Oh. <laughs> well, next thing you know, you're going to have your own logo, and then some guy from Minnesota is going to take your domain. So I don't know, man. It's take just, it. uh, right. Uh, <laughs> what's up with you guys losing y'all's domain names? I don't get that. I don't know. We're going after them. We got some pretty good ideas. The clues have been coming in. It's honestly better this way. So I, Travis is so fired up, dude, and he loves. He does really love this stuff, man. You know, he he could have maybe worked for MI6 or, you know. So, Scooter, know. We, the whole Special goal ops. here, the whole goal tonight is talking about team tournaments and how you prepare and how you, you know, the importance of a, of working with a, you know, having a team partner that you can trust and, and rely on. What do you think makes you guys such a good partnership? Because you both... You, you have good success fishing tournaments. There's not too many events where you're not cashing a check. Uh, that's just the truth. So who's carrying the team here? That's what I want to know. I mean, you know. Scooter. I mean, well, Scooter. I mean, I don't want to say that. But, I mean, it's. I will. It, you know, it's 30 years of of doing it. I've been doing this since I was 18 years old and I'm 48. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a lot of time on the water. Uh and it's really not the places that we fish. It's the the conditions that you fish through as you, you know, as you learn how to, you know, to pattern fish and being able to remember, you know, what you did on those certain situations to catch fish day in and day out. Because every day is different. You, you really can't treat yesterday's catch and think you're going to go out and reproduce the same thing the next day. It just I mean, more than likely it does not happen. You have to you have to change up and be able to to do certain things. And when you have a partner fishing with you, you have an option automatically, you know, that guy is either going to follow your lead and throw something similar to what you got, or he's going to be completely different and do something and do something different. So if you're around fish and you have found fish, even though they may not be biting, because the first thing, I'm going to do is I'm going to go after him the way that I caught him. And it's always nice to have somebody like Eric who's in the back of the boat with a, a, a mindset. He does a lot. His, his finesse game is, is obsolete. It's, it's awesome. I mean, you've seen it. I mean, you've seen him do it on the back of uh on the back of your boat. He pulls out some wicked stuff to catch fish in some crazy situations and, and that's pretty much what he's doing when he's fishing with me. So, uh, I mean, we, when we get around fish, he does catch some game changers. And he's doing it in his own style. If it was a Ned rig, which is something that rarely gets thrown anywhere down here locally, uh, it may be more so now than it was then when he was when he when we caught some key fish to, to uh, put us in the money. Um, I think I think letting I think for the guy in the back of the boat to be really open-minded and do his own thing sometimes is, I mean, it's like having two different people on the boat and it really does help catch fish day in and day out. And that's, that'll help me change up something of what I'm doing. If he's catching them or vice versa, if I'm catching them, he needs to make a change. What's so the, it's, uh, it's really a team, oh, a team thing. Yeah. Somebody asked, no, what, it's, yeah. What, what's the weirdest thing you've seen me throw? Like you were just shaking your head. <laughs> uh, Smith Mountain comes well, to mind. No, that does not, because that don't no. surprise me what you did there. But what, what got me one time was we were fishing on Curl Lake. It was in March, and the water temperature was really cold. And anybody that fishes up there, it's, it's like in the upper 40s. Um, I'm cranking. I mean, that's I'm going to cover water. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit 50 spots a day with a crankbait. And he pulls out. This, what was it? What, glide, what glide big, bait. the glide, glide bait? Gang, gang craft. Yeah, gang craft glide bait. Mm -hmm. Water temperature I, 50. It barely. And I'm sitting there looking at him like, what is this guy doing? I'm like, man, get on the page, you know, like pick a shad wrap up or something. Let's catch a fish. And the rascal throws it out to the first dot we get to. I mean, it's his first, it's his first cast and I, I mean i've been grinding this crankbait for three hours <laughs> he throws that glide bait out and when he gets it back four foot from the boat there is a five to six pound large mouth right on it 
<laughs> and I'm going, what? I, I, I said, don't, don't do this to me. I can't look at those if you're not going to catch them. I was, you know, I was like, I was losing my mind a little bit because he is, he is a pro's worst nightmare. <laughs> he will mess your mind up if you let him. So I've gotten to the point now where I'm like a mule. I got blinders on. I don't look at him. I mm-hmm. just keep going forward and fishing. And if That's he right. catches one, I net it. That's I don't right. know what it, I don't know if it was a Nico, a Sleeko, a Cinco. <laughs> I don't have a clue what kind of Inco he caught it on. <laughs> I, I just go back there and net the thing. And I keep on fishing. But I'll say this, but, you, you've up my power game too. I mean, I, let's talk about that first Bojangles we fished together and, and, or it wasn't the first one. But it was the most important one to me because it was my biggest win of my my team tournament career. So the scooter's like during the week, scooter goes, How much time, how much notice do you need if we're gonna fish on on the Roanoke River on Saturday? I said, Man, like 30 minutes, dude. 30 minutes is all I need. He texts me on a Friday night, like at 9:30, and goes, Man, it's not gonna happen. I got I gotta do what I gotta do tomorrow. You know, you were still farming at that time with your father. And the crops, you had big yep. rains. You had to, you had to get the plants in the ground, you know. And I'm like, yep. man, that's it all right, man. So, so I called my buddy Jack Rinkers. I had a, a team tournament for the PA Bass Nation. We were trying to make it to uh, um, Florida for the Bass Nation Team Championship down there at uh, at uh, what do you call it, uh, the uh, Harris Chain. And uh, so I call up Jack. I'm on the phone with Jack. Jack, man, hey, scooter canceled for Saturday, so I can go practice with you on Conowingo. I'm on the phone with Jack. And Scooter's buzzing in. I'm like, Jack, hold on. And Scooter on the line. And Scooter goes, man, can you still fish? And I'm like, dude, I told you I need 30 minutes. He goes, Ash was in the background. His wife going, man, you guys got to do it. She she talked him into just going fishing. What's one more day going to make a difference? So I got back on the phone. I'm like, Jack, hey, man, uh, what should I do? Scooter could fish. He goes, tell him to F off. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm going to fish with Scooter for four grand. I'll see you Sunday. And so uh, I drove through the night. I met, I was there like 4 30 in the morning. I think I packed up in 30 minutes. And Scooter makes a call early in the morning to run out of the river and we make a long run. It was pretty rough for folks in the sound. So a lot of boats stayed in. And uh we get to our area. And I guess there was a local club tournament in that in mm-hmm. that body of water. And uh he pulls an audible again and says, you know what? We're moving. That was after a seven pounder was under one of his lures that he was throwing. So we roll over to the other side. It's a windblown bank. He goes, man, pick up that rod with 50-pound braid. Don't look back. And I'm pitching, and I'm pitching, and I'm pitching, and I'm pitching. And then I pick up a buzz bait. He goes, he turned around and goes, man, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just, I, I, I got I to I gotta <laughs> throw this. He goes, that, that thing's giving me a headache, and it's not the right thing to do. Anyway, so uh, I keep pitching. Man, I think I stuck like a, a pretty big five and change. You had like a three in the boat with with the other lure that you throw. I'm trying not to talk about the lures because I know you're going to punch. <laughs> I do. So I haven't said a word about a lure yet. Hold on. Let's talk but, about the lure. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We, will. we will. I'll let Scooter decide. <laughs> we can talk about it. So I'm pitching. I'm pitching. I, 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 then I pick up another, but he goes, he turned around and go, what are you doing, man? I'm like, I got to get out of my brain. So I'd make two or three casts and he just kept pressing me. So. I caught another good fish, and I think you caught another one. We we have our limit running out of that river, and I think in your mind you knew it wasn't enough to win. So we get back into oh, the yeah. road, thirty minutes left, and you're like, "All right, man, this is your scene." There's like fifty boats within sight of the launch. She goes, "That's been hit forty times. That's been hit thirty times, but we're gonna fish them." I go, "I know what to do." I literally sat down, took my ferry. Yeah, he, he did, and I, yep. I literally just about choked him out. But yeah, but he did it. So I'm gonna be quiet. Go ahead. Yeah, Finish yeah. The story. So I'm tying a fresh leader on. I tie my little Ned rig on. We hit the first spot. I missed the first spot. I didn't fish the first missed spot. It. Never made a cast on. Nope. I go, no worries, man. It's all good. So we hit the first lay down. Then we hit another channel swing lay down. He's gone. That's been hit 45 times. I said, Don't worry. So I slide it up there via the wood, man. And I'm just letting that thing do its thing. All of a sudden, tick the line, and then I lean into this fish, and all hell breaks loose. Your power pulled down at this point. The yeah. fish is under the boat in the poles, so I let off a little pressure. She swims back out. In, in the, the log. It's in, in, the, in the, log. the log. Under uh, the boat. And, yeah, through yeah, the poles. Yeah. Back around to me, yeah. Yeah, and then and then through the lily pads, and it was I saw a carp spook out, and I'm like, there she is. He goes, uh-huh. she goes oh, it was a, a mullet. 
it was crazy, man. It was a mullet, whatever. And then finally, man, I let off a little bit. And she goes literally under the trunk and, and pulls hard three more times. Scooter, you thought I lost it twice. And finally, she just pops up to the surface. It was like a five. It floats. floats up. He just puts her in the net, man. Seven minutes to go. Seven yep. minutes to go. Roll for right back for the win. Four ounces. For the win. Yep. That's pretty cool. I think that really cemented our relationship. Because I'm like, I got to listen to Scooter more because my power game is like, grown 10x but and i, I quit still- and i quit telling him to put the little shaky rod shaky stuff down so <laughs> so he earned some respect with me that day on that one and uh you know i give it to him ever since nah man so, you got me my biggest tournament fish ever man I, it's seven, nine six on the ferry wand mm-hmm. so, so no biggest, yeah you call it seven yeah seven nine six that's right my, my biggest ago. question is uh when when do i get eric back for the year <laughs> can't you find some other show yeah, down yeah. there in south carolina or whatever you guys fish <laughs> for your boat jingles or whatever your hardy's I, 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 your... I give him back to you for the small mouth crush part of the year when you go smash them rascals i don't yeah. get to, to participate in any of that i'm i'm doing other things i'm off the water and in the woods mm-hmm. so so you got him for a couple months before it gets hard water so, not sounding too good. It's not sounding too good for me. It sounds like you got it figured out. You don't need him all that time. Well, that's right. I mean, that how, you many, how many tournaments are you guys playing the fish here in in 2021 together? Well, well, last year was kind of odd. You know, I don't know about you, but but most of most of uh, everywhere around, you know, everything kind of got canceled, or and then it was. People were like, maybe we're not going to have a trail. And then some people decide to do a crash course, like six or seven tournaments in three months to get to a classic. Well, that's kind of what happened here. And it kind of put us in a, it was, it was like a, it was crazy for about three months. I mean, we fished about every single weekend. Yeah. From probably what June from June till October, it was, it, you know, cause there was like three or four different trails that were local to me that I don't normally get to fish. Yeah. Mm. I, you know, I'm not normally fishing right where I, where I love to fish. I'm usually fishing off yeah. and, and those trails have been postponed. So we got to fish some right in my backyard last year, which was, which was really nice. I got to, you know, relax, didn't have to really put in a lot of practice time. We just, we just kind of showed your- up. What's your favorite lake to fish together? If you could pick one lake, what would it be? Good question. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like her. I like her lake. I mean, it's. I mean, I know we won the we won the classic on Gaston, uh, but probably for day in and day out catching fish and really getting on that, that lake patterns well. I mean, you can you can really once you pattern those fish on Kerr, you can you can run the whole lake with that pattern and catch them. Is that all the year long patterns over spots? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much not the same spots, but once you figure your fish out, you can just run the whole lake. I mean, is the pattern game over spot specific? So if you, my point is if, if you fish that lake all the time and you know, these little spots, 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 run to this spot, you got to get to this spot, kind of like the Chesapeake. You're saying someone can come from out of town and do well, run in a pattern. Is that what I'm hearing correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I lost you for a second. I mean, something okay. happened to my connection. You get the point. You get the point. Yeah. 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 People from out of town, if you if you catch if you catch, you know, you you know, one fish, it don't tell you much, but if you catch two or three fish doing the same thing, you can run that pattern. I mean, pretty much until it I mean, it might be an early morning thing. Then you have to find something for the middle of the day and so forth and so on. But that lake really does pattern well. Uh, like Lake Gaston, it's it's like a hodgepodge to me. I mean, that's how it fishes to me. I've been fishing it for years. I mean, you know, sometimes they're on docks, and that's after lunch. Sometimes, you know, they're on the grass. Sometimes they're just randomly down the rock banks. I mean, it's – or out deep. I mean, it's a – it's, it's conditions and the water levels and everything thrown together. So, very yeah. cool. Yeah, Scooter, what's your uh, what's your personal best smallmouth? Uh, I caught one five, probably five and a quarter. Damn, here 
I know. Here. You're good, man. There you go. Bad. You know what's up. Yeah, yeah on Lake Erie. You know yeah. He's been to the big pond. I it see a bunch awesome. of rods. I see a bunch of rods behind you. How many are spinning rods? Oh, you would be so surprised. Uh, there's <laughs> at least what? Uh, is he stepping up his spinning rod game this year? He he does. He, yes, he wants he wants one good good rig. To, well, there's to at least do. five, but they're really? all rigged with fifty. They're all rigged with fifty pound braid <laughs> <laughs> for striper for striper. No, no, uh, for drum. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So you the, you're in a unique position. I mean, you get to do a lot of salt. The, the big baits. Yeah. So you get to do and a little salt water. What the heck? Yeah. Mm. Blabber so you mouth. Get to tap into the salt water, the the fresh water. Where's your like help me on the map? Where's your hometown? It it would be in Williamston, North Carolina. Okay. It's yeah. uh C thirty you inshore charters right there guys cww inshore first charters. of all if people are yeah, alex if you can put it up here on the in the comments uh how can we get a hold of you to book a trip and do you have availability are you pretty much booked up or if someone is interested tell just real quick because i yeah. see your instagram and you catch these uh whatever they call them redfish and bass and everything right tuna and right, whatever yeah. else i don't know <laughs> tuna, no oh, no, no. I'm Fill all in, in man. Fill me in. What, what's up with that? I'm all in, sure. So, I mean, in order to keep up tournament fishing, I went to Guiden, and uh, Guiden pays the bills, of course. You know how that is. All of us tournament fishermen. Uh, but, you know, um, I got for largemouth, uh, which is my one of my favorites, but is my favorite. Stripers mm -hmm. from now till May, and then from May till the 1st of August, I'll be guiding uh, speckled trout, largemouth, and then from August to October, I'll be guiding for the bull reds. And that's a the very popular, mm -hmm. yeah, the 40 to 60 pounders. Guys, I, I, I've done that trip, Travis. You, you literally have to do it. How many can it's you a, catch in a day? Depends. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, that, that thing, that, that fish, and I don't oh. never oversell it. Yeah. It's, it's a, okay. You're looking. So if, if, on an average day, if you went out with me and you and your buddy went and both of you caught one, you had a good day. But, oh, that's how it is. I didn't I didn't mean mm -hmm. to offend at all. I was just no, asking. Uh, really no, no, no. Uh, you're not offended. I mean, that's that's really – you've done it. It's, it's one of those deals where people just go to get the picture. It's a bucket list type fish. Uh, they're some of the biggest in the world right here on the coast right here in North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, it's not a numbers game at all. Mm. It's not like catching the stripers where when they're running, you'll catch, you know, 40 to 100 a day. It's uh, you're going after a big fish and you may see several of them and not get but one bite. Okay. You may not even get a bite. I mean, it's happened. It happens. It happens in uh -huh. fishing. I don't like to admit it, but it does. But I have caught up to 18 to 20 fish in one trip and you are exhausted by the time you you really in that many fish. I mean, these fish wow. take. 15, 20 minutes to get them in sometimes. And it's a, it's a big fish. It's a, it's a heck of a fight. And, you know, people go there cause it's like, it's like a hunt. You're hunting down a, a particular thing, like one fish, you're hunting him down. And uh, that's what they do. I was booked up for 60 some straight days last year fishing for those reds. Wow. Crazy, right? Mm-hmm. It's fun. So you had two boats, I assume, uh, a saltwater rig and a bass boat or... Do you use both? Yes. I'm okay. running a uh, 26 foot uh, Triton Bay boat, thanks to uh, Lee Kia of Greenville, uh, and a TR20 uh, bass boat with a 250 on the back, thanks to Angler's Choice from Martinsville, Virginia, mm. and Triton. Yep. And right those on. two boats have put me wherever I need to be, and they do the job. Mm -hmm. I got yep. Yeah, man. The Triton runs nice, man. Yep. That's a good rough water boat. The ocean pony, man. <laughs> yeah. You're pretty <laughs> thing. Good wheel, man. I mean, Travis can drive on the Great Lakes and you can drive yeah. in those towns, man. I mean, Travis, that's some no joke water down there. Well, I mean, I'm sure Travis is in some no joke water where he's at. That's some big there's water. No, there's yeah, no question. You're, no you're, you're fishing in the ocean <laughs> for smallmouth. Basically. I mean, yeah, bass, pretty much. Bass, yeah. bass boats aren't meant for that place. No. Nah. Crazy. Mm -mm. You have you've got to be a you got to be a little crazy and a little careful at the same time. I'm pretty sure you do. 
Yeah. But that's the way this place treats you down here a little bit. It gets it gets wet. It gets wild. How long have you been running Tritons? Uh since two thousand and two. Mm. And my partner at the time, we were in one of the first ones. I believe it was a ninety nine model, maybe was one of the first ones or two thousand. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We were in one of the first Tritons. How about that? That, that, that came off the uh, assembly line. Hey, do you and, ever know what this? Uh, this kind of off topic, real quick. Mm-hmm. Does Eric break a lot of fish off on your boat in a tournament? <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just asking. Well, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Most of them I didn't know about until like weeks after. <laughs> but I remember me going. What happened? Why, why are you retiring? And he's like, i have just barnacle. Nothing. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. It's just yeah. barnacles down there, man. Just, That's... Barnacle. just a barnacle. Honestly, what are you going to do, man? Yeah. Then what, but, yeah. I mean, he gets the bites. I, I mean, I've, I had probably already fished something through there. So, I mean, but, you know, there was a, a couple miracle. of times. It's a miracle I get a bite behind you. Well, there was a couple of times this year you, you had a couple bites behind me that I wasn't aware of until – you told me later, mm-hmm. oh. but I had a, I knew though, I, I knew How you had a bite. Away with that? I, I don't understand. I see everything that goes on in my boat. Oh, I saw it. And my brain was telling me what I saw, but yeah, he was going, <laughs> Oh, it was just, it was dude. You're, Travis, you're still holding on to that one five in chains. I broke off on that. Not only that, Eric, but I don't, by, I, the way, I, by the way, by the way, the reason I get those bites, I think sometimes it's because I fish lighter. Okay, but let me ask you this. Eric, 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 I am not thinking about that one. I'm thinking about the one after that. You don't even remember this one. It was back in that other marina. You mean that was on the right hand side, and you blamed it on it being a snakehead. It was. Whatever. I I, I, there was a pointed tooth sitting in my worm (laughs) that floated up to the surface. We lost two tournaments because of Eric. That's all I'm saying. Dude, well, you wouldn't you wouldn't have been in the running if it wasn't. Oh my fish. god! Wow. Well, let me just tell you that you hog and both times he was up front. You had one two pounder in the, the, in the well with sixteen pounds in the well. I had the six three three, the four, the five, and you had a little punk in the well. That was That's all because I got on that stupid Carolina rig idea and I started chucking that sea <laughs> rig out there the whole time and catching what, stupid that, catfish. What what is a sea rig? Carolina rig. Oh, yeah. Ball oh, and yeah. chain. The ball and chain. Mm-hmm. It's what we use. It's what we use. Cut bait for stripers. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Croaker yeah. rigs and croaker rigs. Cut bait rigs. Yeah. The, the reason they call him Scooter is because he covers about a million miles of water. Literally, in one current tournament, we must have hit 150 spots. I well, literally I heard- jump up out of my seat, and he'd be putting the trolling motor back to go to the next spot. Guys, I don't. I don't disagree. I heard a rumor, Scooter. I'm going to ask you. I heard that. You're afraid of some of these newer high powered brushless motors because you go through a lot of uh shafts from trolling motors every year. Is that true? What are you doing? Just grinding into shit. Well, I mean you you break (laughs) five or six a year, don't you? That's what I I mean. I can I can mess up one. It has to have a spring, (laughs) it has to have a spring in it. It has to be a shock absorber. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, if it's a solid shaft, it ain't gonna make it. Yeah, he's okay. tough on equipment, man. He he said so we were I mean, when you slam into something running wide open, it, it no don't, you're, it you're, don't, you're it tough on equipment, up. man. You're tough on your rods, yeah. you're tough on everything. You move fast, you fish fast, and you're harder on equipment. Is that a is that was that was an Ike commercial? Sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to steal <laughs> that was good. But that's why they call him scooter. He goes yeah. and moves. Travis, the dude covers tons of water. I will tell you that's one of the reasons I think we're so successful. That's he covers great. water. I, I love it. I, I fish. And I, he knows when to go. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm so fascinated by that because I am the least cover water guy. The freaking you are, least. You're exactly will, the you will, a, me, you will see me in a spot in the morning, and I will be there when you're coming back. Exactly. Like, I mean, I like that's a lot of guys that do well like that. I just – I have not got the patience to sit still. I can go fish that spot you're sitting on four different times that day. Yeah. That's but true. I cannot – I cannot – He can't do my, it. I just can't sit myself there all day. I have to really be actively catching something before I'm going to stay. He can't do it. He, he just mm-hmm. can't do it. Man. 
Yeah. I've always fished that way. Everything I fish for, I Man. fish that way. Like I go after it instead of letting it come to me. I, I, yeah. I go after, yeah, you know, I go look in the one that's biting, not the one I'm going to try to make bite. That's Damn. exactly, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. Looking for the active fish. Yeah, I'm it's, looking for the active fish. You got to, you got to adapt your style. So instead of drop shot now and power shot, we're about to test the theory. Will I get as many bites behind scooter if I'm throwing 25 pounds? Yeah. We're going to find out next year because I've told we are. You, I'm going to heavy up. I'm going to trust. And, you know, you went through a season where you were monkeying with rods and we would have won a ton of money if you had the right setup. But I'll tell you what. Oh, man, I, I look, you were talking about him blowing a tournament. Eric blowing one for you, and I get it. I I blew one so far out of whack last last year, last season. It was a really nice big tournament for down here, and I dumped them. I mean, I was bending the hooks out on them. I was jumping them off. It it was it looked it looked like amateurville. I was, and it was just crazy because you were getting the bites. You knew where to mm -hmm. go. Oh, I was I knew right where he was sitting, and yeah. I couldn't I couldn't put him in the boat. Nope. Nope. Four pounders. But you gone. figured it out this year. That's for sure. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. the right setup this mm -hmm. year. I had to yeah. I had to lighten up. I fish a lot of braid in the yeah. in clear water. A lot what of braid. What kind of braid do you water. like? What kind of braid do you like? I've always been I mean, I for 20 some years been throwing power pro. Just yeah. straight up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just never let me down much. Of course, you can break some of everything off, but the power pro has been the best. I like the way yeah. it casts. You know, it does really uh, well around barnacles. Right, um, right. But I was, I was, I had a rod that was overpowering my hooks with the braid. Like he, yep. when I started out catching all the fish that I was catching, I was kind of using like a, I ain't gonna say the name brand, but I was using a cranking rod, which is a little. One of my buddies told me to use a cranking rod with the braid when you're flipping, and and I'm talking, I like to flip, and I'll go ahead and say it, I like to flip like a three sixteenths out, um, shaky head. It's got a four or five volt hook in it, depending on if you have them special made. And I'll flip a trick worm on it or a Cinco on it, and I'll run 30 to 40 pound braid to it. And it's and the water's clear, but I was I was throwing it on a cranking rod. So when you set the hook, you got him. Because it had more, you know, you had some flex in that rod to take the shock out with that. Because even with the shaky head hook, you, you know, you got the nobody had a super line hook at the time. So I was having to give – I had to have some give in my rod to catch the fish. And then last – the year before last, I had a heavier-duty rod because I broke that rod, and I had bought another rod to replace it, and I was bending my hooks out. I mean, it was flat-out mm -hmm. bent out, and I was losing the fish. So I had to go back to a lighter rod, and I started catching it. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So how about this million-dollar tournament? Yeah, Team what's up with that? I've been talking I, about that I for how many years. Found how many? How I ain't many found no information at all. Travis, it's Nitro, Triton, and Ranger owners. All right, I'll look it up tomorrow. I didn't know anything about Man, it. Man, that's I. I've been no. I've been talking I heard. about it to several people, and I ain't found out nothing about it. I, does anybody out there know anything? Does anybody know anything? A lot of people have been sending me pictures of what they saw, so it's out there. Apparently, a notice went. Oh, to I've got team. a. I got a with, picture of that. Yeah, it went to the dealers, Travis. It came from Johnny Morris. It's got to okay. be whatever his group of boats are. I don't well, know what the format is. It's like if you fish regionals and then you qualify, kind of like Bass Nation, and you're an owner, or is it a specific trail, regional, or is it a national trail where you got to qualify, or is it a one-day or multi-day event that you just qualify for because you own the boat? Yeah. I it's hear a dealer. you. Jamie Newton said it's a dealer deal. Somebody saw it on the Bass Pro Shops page. It's crazy. A million dollar tournament? No way. Wow. No way, man. I can't. I can't. I can't believe it. But if it's true, it's what I've been asking for. Damn. I mean, Good honestly, stuff. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that there's not a national professional team level tournament trail. Yeah, there should be. It's coming. It's coming. Johnny well, thought about it. maybe maybe Johnny was watching our streams and heard about it. It said, "Let's do that." Man, did, did he we get gotta watch that? what we say on these streams, man. Everybody's taking our damn ideas. <laughs> first of all, first of all before, you know, we're we're gonna get rushed off to the next topic here. And before we do that, I just first of all want to make sure to thank you, Scooter, for coming along. 
hanging out with us. It's been like, it's been a while. I think I'd like to have you as a regular guest, Scooter, if you're okay with it. Now that you know yeah, how to use, sure. work those headphones and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I got to thank him. I got these right here when I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll be ready for that for sure. I want to hear about, I want you guys checking in this summer. Can you do that? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, it would be, nice. be a lot of fun, man. Yeah, I would love to do that from wherever we are, man. Do some live tournament updates and tell some stories because I think people really like hearing about uh -huh. what's going on in the water. I've tried to be yeah. really respectful to Scooter yeah. over the years. The, the only day. story that's happened this year was the one he hit me. Did that you hear he hit me? Dude, listen to this, Travis. I'm sure. So, oh, no. Yeah. I mean, it, it was like really hard. Punch, Eric punched but, me before, too. Twice. You Coming close to see a star. my head. You... You laid hands on me first, Travis, when I lost that fish, man. Come on, man. No, you you hugged me kind of when I caught the big one, when I was dead sticking that Nico rig on the wall because I told you they were there and they were. And then I had that other five coming up and I didn't retie. That was a rookie mistake. I'll be honest. Mm. I fucked up. All right. That's a straight Tell up. Tell me I, your I story, sure. Well, uh, one more thing. I'll give a heads up to my son. He's the one, you know, you're talking about this stuff I finally figured out. My son told me how to use these, Zane. Uh -huh. That Zane Lilly, he got me the the headset. He knows how to game, so he yeah. said, "Dad, you can." He said, "You can borrow him tonight." So, man, that's straight up so, south right there. Thank you. So, Zane. hey, big man, and and to Ash for the technical support. To I make it to, man, I can't. I couldn't even got on the computer to start with to get get this thing going without her. <laughs> but uh, so we were fishing. Uh, so we were fishing uh, a tournament here this summer, and. Uh, <laughs> It wound up being the the wire for the points championship that we actually won. And I, we had ran like, I don't know, 40, 50 miles, maybe 50 miles one way to some fish. We caught 30 or 40 fish, and I swear we didn't have I, – I don't think we had 10 pounds mm -mm. Out, out of 40 fish that we caught. And we were on the way back in. I'm losing my mind like I do after lunchtime. I just start he – He's in full spin around, out. Like spin full out. Spin out. And yeah. I try to be calm. I try to be the calm mm -hmm. one. And he's wearing uh -huh. my sunglasses. Because he didn't have a pair, they were like, "Right, really I was, I was wearing your glasses. Mine had gotten scratched to be scratched. Damn, he couldn't see because yeah. we were running through rain. It was crazy, man. So I'm like, try these on scooter. He's looking good. Yeah, All right. I, had his, I, I had his blue blockers on. So then what happened? And we're running down, <laughs> we're running down there, and I pull in a set of trees. <laughs> and he he did the little mysterious line break off thingy, and uh, you know, on a barnacle. It was and giant. Then, uh, it was like, I know. It honestly, Travis. I'm was with, it was like a seven. Got yeah, me right it was. Like, and I had I, a, <laughs> whatever. I make excuses all day long. I was throwing 20 pound gamma. What could I do? Uh, you did have heavy line. And he broke it. And uh, then I had, a, <laughs> I had a five or six pounder come up and, and, and try to eat my bait twice and yep. uh, didn't get it. It was raining yep. at this point. Hard. And uh, finally caught one and we hauled butt. We had. I don't know, 10 minutes to fish. I pulled up on a dock and I was throwing a I was throwing a top water bait under the dock and bam, one about three pounds got it. And uh he netted it. He said, Man, great cull. And I said, I said, not really. <laughs> I mean, you're yeah, sitting on like, 10 pounds. I mean, you're sitting really. on 10 pounds. Yeah. It's gonna take 20, 20 pounds to even think about winning. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so we're sitting at twelve. You know, I'm like, <laughs> not really. So uh -huh. I, my next cat, my next cast is a five and a half or five and three quarter eating. Next cast, and I put it, yeah, the next cast right back the same spot. Caught the fish. He put him in the net, and I I was grabbing the fish out of the net, and I picked up on it. And Eric came up to fist bump me because you know how excited he no, gets. No, I go, goes, yeah, I go, yeah. that's my yeah. dad. Oh yeah, I go, that's He's my dad. That's my, mother and he, and and he bam. Bumping. And right when he did that, the fish the, the the fish shook, and I went down, and uh -huh. he got me right there. Jay. And the glasses, the glass lenses split and fell out. And I was like, man, whoa, what would have happened if I caught a, a eight pounder? Oh you know? shit, yeah. But but he knocked yeah. the glasses all the heck. We went to the clock me, man. I thought he was going to clock me, man. But he didn't. Uh, no, and that was uh, that was. I knew it. Fit. I knew it was a. It was whatever it was. I was celebrating it, man. That's my bad mother effer. Boom! And that, <laughs> Boom. that, fish, that fish shook and he went to Island like, Eric. Oh, man. It's a, it's a, it's I a felt horrible. Deal. I felt horrible, man. I wish we had a GoPro. You know how viral that would have gone? Me, oh, seven. Oh, dude, we'd have had a million views, man. Damn. Yeah. 
Right it's up on as far as I've ever practice. been hit in my boat without me hitting somebody back. I can tell you that. I can't believe he. I mean, you you, you could take a punch, man. He's harder in the coffin than coffee <laughs> that guy. <laughs> well, what's your boys going to talk about tonight? What's going on? I don't know. This? So we got a mystery mystery guest coming up. Of course, we got BTC. I'm not sure what else is on the uh, docket. Uh, you know. BTC basically produces the Ike live show, the Bass University stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think he shadow shadow produces this show from time to time. So I don't <laughs> oh, know does. what he has in store, but I'm excited. First of all, again, Scooter, thank you for hanging out. Thank we you. definitely want to bring Scooter on again. One last time, how can people get a hold of you uh, if they want to book a guide trip? Uh, you can go check my uh, Instagram out at, at Captain Scooter Lily. Uh, Facebook is CWW Inshore Charters, and my my website is CWWCharters.com. And that's how you can get in touch with me. I appreciate it. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, Eric, are you ready for our I am, man. The mystery guest? Can, We're going to take can, a quick. Can, We're going to take. Wait, go ahead. Wait, go ahead. Hey, let, me, let me send off my man, man. I've been okay, waiting to get him ahead. on. For, for send me off. Oh, I got to leave. I got to go. No, no, you're hanging, man. I'm just saying, man. Thanks for coming on, man. I love oh, fishing man. with you, man. You could, yeah. I, couldn't have a, I couldn't ask for a better partner, man. You taught me a ton. And uh, I bring some of that power game when I fish with Travis now. So, you know, you've made me a more complete angler, and I thank you. You're well, a good I, friend. I bought a couple spinning rods, just so good. you know. You're a great captain and even better friend, man. The hospitality that you and your family have shown me when I've come down to the Carolinas, man, I can't thank you enough. You've made me very happy over the last couple of years and my biggest, my biggest tournament wins to date, man. And we uh, we laugh a lot and we get it done, man. Yep. It's a ball fishing with you, brother. It's all about thank having you. fun. That's exactly well, right. We laugh. Fix that, right. man a, fix that man a proper man, a drink. Proper drink. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, next time I'll let Eric talk about some of the baits. Yeah, there you go. We'll oh, get yeah. into it. We'll get into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now All I'm right. Let's to get to our commercial I, break and let's let's get going. The boundaries, baby. I try to respect the boundaries. Scooter, I don't thank you very much. Secrets. I mean, well, I, I kind of like the sign up. You guys are just going to blah, blah, blah. Oh, we would. We would. We, we could keep going for hours. I, no. Scooter, you're going to stick with us for a little bit. We're going to be right back. All right. Yo, it's Smallmouth Crush. Want to make sure your electronics are set up right or maybe you have a new body of water that you want to break down or have a second pair of eyes, I can help you with that. In fact, we can pretty much talk anything fishing related that you would like. I have a service called the Smallmouth Crush One-on-One, -on -one, and it's been keeping me pretty busy. Uh, actually, we've been doing a bunch of these on a weekly basis, but it's a uh, private consultation where you simply sign up and we'll pick a time to meet. I'm very flexible, whether it be during the day or evening hours. And we'll have a video conference where you'll actually get a videotape of the one-on-one. -on -one, so you don't have to worry about taking notes and all that. We can just really pound out all the questions that you might have. And it's been real helpful. I think a lot of people that have gone through the one-on-ones with me uh, came out with a different mindset or perhaps uh, just a lot more information and things that they haven't thought of in the past. So it's a, uh, it's an awesome, <laughs> awesome experience. I love doing them. I love helping people out. So if you want to do that, you can just head on over to my website, travismanson.com. And in the store in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a link for that. Put it in your cart. It'll send me a notification and then I'll actually get back with you uh, with some times that we can meet as well as uh, some general questions on how we can make the most of our our time together for the Smallmouth Crush one-on-one. -on -one. I hope to talk to a bunch of you guys over there. And also, don't forget about the Spro Frog we talked about earlier in the show. Of course, if you head on over to therealshot.com right now and use my code SMALLMOUTHCRUSH15, they're going to give you 15% off your first order. So go in and grab a bunch of these frogs for this coming season. The Real Shot is Wisconsin's number one independent outdoors pro shop that specializes in bass fishing gear and tackle. We've got all of the biggest and most sought after brands in bass fishing all under one roof. Our online shop has a massive catalog of some of the greatest bass products you'll need to find success on the water. We ship fast and nationwide, so head on over and see what we have to offer by visiting www.therealshot.com today. Are you ready for this, Eric? 
What do you got in the what do you got looming in the background? Bro? I don't know. Let's bring uh, up uh, <laughs> your boss. <laughs> Yo, boss. Yo, boss. Yeah. Yo. What's up, man? <laughs> what's up? What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? B to the T in the I, hizzle. I yeah. Is is the hater too loud? No. No, it's fine. Huh? We just it's, no audio. I just wonder what you're cooking there in the garage. What you got cooking in the garage, BTC? <laughs> Are you Heisenberg? Oh, yeah, we're, we're cooking mess in the garage. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Heisenberg, that's heat, baby. Yeah, they, I got a heater going there. too. You are the heat, bro. You got hey, a heater going you? too, Jeff. I know. Hey, listen. First of all, guys, I just want to again, scooter, scooter's on, but he's he's uh he's off the screen right now. He's in. We'll we'll, br we'll be bringing him on as well. Great talk about team fishing tournaments. I hope BTC didn't hear my comment about being the second strain. Uh, no, I guess he didn't. Oh, there it is, Eric. BTC, did you hear that? <laughs> did you hear my comment? No. What, what I meant. Okay, what good. Meant. No, we're good. Uh -oh. We'll talk about it later. Let's cool. get into it. We got some. Oh. I, I see somebody else lurking here. I see the name Matt, but I, his face is blurry no right way. now. I don't know who Dang. we got. I don't Matt, know. I can't me? tell. I don't know who it is. Oh, I'm not going to say. Oh. I'm just going to press. There he is. Honestly, <laughs> I, was, I was told that the only way I could join this is if I had a blue vest. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was told that. It's blue vest night. Yeah. It's Do you remember when we fished Cumberland, Travis, and you wore I a different remember. vest every night for nine nights, and I brought three vests and we're in <laughs> Cumberland, Kentucky, Tennessee, and I'm like, dude, we can't both be rolling out to like the only place to eat in vests every single night. And I never got to wear a vest. He would intentionally take a shower and get dressed to go out to eat just so he could put his vest on before mine. <laughs> so it would look like I was wearing a vest instead of him. Well, first of all, the rule is if you're, if you're two dudes going out into a new town or I don't care if it's your hometown, you don't wear two, you don't wear, you don't both wear vests. And so we respected that rule and I appreciate it. Matt, when you changed, I didn't have an option. No, you didn't. No. Yeah, I, I, we kind of have a rule: you never wear a vest. I got to do it. Okay, I, was, I, I don't. I don't even own a vest. I don't even own a vest. I got a life vest. I was gonna put that on and a helmet. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome, man. I remember. Sure I remember. Thing, I, remember huh? I remember FaceTime with you guys. He had the vest on, man. He had a camo one. What else did he have? He had like different ones every night. Oh, yeah. that was when we were trying to find that magical mystery color of uh, mm -hmm. Robo Worm. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. We were morning. freaking out. We had like seven of them for four morning, days. And morning sunrise. <laughs> ah, that's the hey, one. So, oh, no. so, so uh, let me get a plug in here before before it gets crazy. Please do. Um, and and. Yes, and I know I, I want to hear what Matt, what you guys got coming up on BTL. But uh, Sunday night we got a night live. Matt, do you hear who we have coming on? No, who you got? I want to hear. I want, I want your opinion. I want your honest reaction to this. So Sunday night we have Byron Velvic coming on night live. Oh man, nice. that's nice, nice. I would, I would love to see that guy make a comeback. Wow. Yeah, I'm it's, excited, man. It's like he's just. We, we just all forgot about him. He disappeared, and I mean, dude, what... big name, big personality, and yeah, uh, man. Mike used to be really tight. And uh, it's this gonna be cool, man. I got some some uh, surprise guests for him uh, that we'll hold on to. But, That's awesome. Yeah, we got Byron Velvet and then uh, Ryan Lambert's gonna come on and, and talk about kayak. What's going on? In the nice. Wow. Pretty big exciting name. stuff. Good stuff, man. Good mm -hmm. stuff. You're yeah, rocking. Who you got coming on this week, Matt? Uh, that's a good question because we don't ever do any pre-production meetings. I need to go over to Bass and see who we got coming on here. <laughs> what? I'm serious. I've told you, you guys we go. Just... Oh, oh, we got uh Ken Duke on who is ah. uh he is like the stat. Oh, he okay. He is well. the, for for bass fishing stats to what Epic Eric is to JDM and wow. uh uh. So, you know, specialty baits. Like, he yeah. just knows everything. You're like, who finished yeah. ninth in the 1987 Bassmaster Classic? And he'll tell you who finished ninth. Like, off the top mm -hmm. of the head. 
Yeah, yeah he, he won't just know. He won't just so, tell you who finished who finished ninth. He'll tell you his birthday and where he was born, at like everything. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's he's a a wealth of knowledge when it comes to history. I'm actually a little upset just now by what Matt just said. How he's so disorganized. Um, what? I'm gonna bring him on real quick. Alex is here, my intern. It sounds like not for long because next thing I know, Alex is probably going to be reaching out to BTL, BTL asking oh, yeah. for a job over there too. So not if I'm you want to get paid, now. Alex. If you want to get paid, stay away from Mark Jeffrey's intern program. Well, I got news for you. He's not getting paid here either. So how can he wrong? now he's just got to decide what's the better show. Did Travis pay for that backdrop? Nope. It's a blanket. Yes, this is made out of sheepskin. Costs about forty five hundred dollars. He said oh, something shit. about the government puts like chemicals <laughs> and blankets and stuff. So we had to get a special one to make up for the regular. Jeez, tab we have. Eric, that oh, looks yeah. like that fish that you broke off in the marina that cost <laughs> for the tournament. Hey, hey. And, and, and real, and real quick before we get top, going, I do want top, I, top I, three. Top three. I do want bring, I do want to bring Scooter back just to say hi to everybody. Scooter, real quick. Hello, guys. What's up? This is this is Eric's team partner, guys. And that's BTC, that's man. It. I hear a lot about you. Good to see Same you. Right. Same. That's right. Yeah, I got to get right, down man. and fish with you, man. Oh, hey, yeah. Yes, yeah. I want y'all to come yeah. down the door. It'll be we'll fun. Get on. Dude, yeah. kayak and a big red drum. Right. I don't even know what would man, that, I, that would I be can, epic. Yeah, I, I can tell you I can tell you behind the boat at least at 45. It'll be good. <laughs> Ah, love it. Love it. Kind of like surfing All right. or not. <laughs> All right, Alex, we're going to let you go again. Yep. Look at the heat. Look at the fish and heat on the screen. How long have you had an me? intern? Oh, man, hey. since probably October now? Oh How about gosh. that? We did an average. I did a. I begged Travis to hire an intern for years, and then finally he did. The guy wrote him a note, and he goes, what do you think of this cat? And he wrote a really great email, like grammatically correct. That was plus one. Mm -hmm. Made a business case for it. Hold two. on. Real quick. And First then Travis all, was like, do I have to give him access to all of my stuff? And I'm like, yeah, that's the downside. <laughs> knows where I'm going. I like to be efficient, so grammar doesn't matter to me. So, like, if I decide to put up a video that says they're – you know, drops their phone in the, in the water, and it's T H E R E because that's how you just. I don't like to spell the same word with different letters. And then I get a message from BTC that goes yeah. there, there, and they T H E Y apostrophe R E. And then I'm like, and I'm quick. I get it. I got it real quick. BTC, just so you know. <laughs> Come on, man. It's all about efficiency. Yeah. I I don't know, man. I I, I think it's kind of cool to like know stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just I mean like too. Yeah. Make an effort, right. Travis. Fine. A, you effort. get an A for effort. That's right. Make an effort to to be grammatically correct. There's something called Grammarly. If you want to install it, you know when you when you run a business, things matter like that when you're in the public mm -hmm. eye. Tell them That's that. Okay. Yeah. So we have one more. Guest coming soon. Oh, I, would shit. And, uh, what? I would say, I would say, that especially where we're broadcasting here on YouTube, big name. So, I'm gonna, big, I'm gonna step out for a second and say, of all the people big, big, big in the bass bass fishing community that are podcasting, BTC, you have the best, driest wit. I'm giving you the award tonight, gold medal, number one in the biz. Matt Panger, dude, yeah. I love the way you think. You're listening and absorbing the content with Jeffries and the way you ask the questions to draw interest to the stream. I don't think there's anybody better at it yes. than you because you're a fisherman. You're an analyst in this game. And I love how you do that. I was watching the stream today. You're thoughtful. You think you take your time. You're not blurting stuff out like me. And, and it's just, I just love the way you frame and shape your questions, man. Props to you. Best. Best analyst in the game. I'm giving that to you, man. You get my tops. And and Scooter Lily, you, my friend, best captain bass man in the game. Uh, just quit it, man. Travis. Won't, Travis. Won't put on the yes, yeah. Best live show 
going. For Bassin. If we can keep it going. And craziness in the game. But don't take a break and head to Lake Ontario for four months. I had uh, four awards tonight, man. That's that's pretty impressive. Everybody, give everybody a hand that's here for the show. Thank, BTC, thank, thank. we'll have a trophy for you later. Hey, BTC, I did a I did a lure pack for BTC. Talk to me, BTC. What'd you think? You about did. That? What? Uh, my to, lure pack? Me, it's, uh, come on. Did you, you get, get out, one, man? Start some shit. No. Now. Did it have that fuzzy worm in it? Uh huh. Did you get it that? It had the fuzzy. No, he had. You got the fuzzy worm. <laughs> no way. That's pretty. Oh yeah, he got the shaky jig worm, brother. Oh yeah, he got. Some I didn't even get that. Thing. And I'm a finesse angler. Like I don't you, get this. Dude, I can see why you. Left, I can see why you left Scooter out. But BTC, <laughs> what's he gonna do this time of year? He's throwing a shad dude. wrap with with yeah. a one up size freaking treble hook. Dude, that if he gives me anything, he'll cut it off at the end of the day and sneak it back in his box. So I mean, I don't even know what I had. Hey, Panger, did you go to my? Did you? Did yeah, you my- I saw you had that underwater. You're trying to go with the Gobi look on it. it it's Dude. that's very similar to what those fly guys are drifting for the big rainbows, the sculpin patterns. Oh, I like, yeah, I like that. Oh, BTC, yeah. show that again. He look, he's showing the juice right now, man. BTC, I saw that that shaky it. worm will work on Lake Lake Hopon Dog. You'll catch a limit out what there. What kind of flat side was that? Actually, that was the Fritz side. Was that, that, the, that, was that, 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 that was the Fritz side? Uh, That's yeah, nice. Yeah, I yeah. like the color. I love that color. I know I threw, what's up. I threw this thing twice, and and I was I was out. I fished a, a winter league with uh, Ike on Saturday, and uh, I tied it on for the first time and threw it. Mike just, Mike hadn't even thrown it yet, and he's like, "Yeah, wow. I don't even really feel any vibration." Or something, and I'm like, I, I was like, "Yeah." I'm out there. I'm like, yeah, I don't feel anything. And as it's coming to the boat, I'm like, Mike, look. And we both looked at it in the water and we're like, oh, shit. You just knew. Something about it. You just freaking knew that it was right. And it actually ran a little too deep for what I was dealing with. Uh, but, yeah, I, well, I could I, see it. You could see it immediately. I've heard a lot of good things about it's it. It's the deal. I got it's a lot of stuff. buddies catching a lot of big fish yeah. on it right now. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, no, it, it, All right, it looked amazing. So that's, a, that's so, a great color. Oh, so got BDS four. What is that? A one point yeah. five something other? Uh, you gave him a BDS four, Eric. That's a BDS four, man. That's a that's a members only color. Oh my god, he got a little PD in there too. That's an upper bay stellar color right there. That's beautiful. All right, little, first little of all, PD. for all of our viewers right now. There's definitely a treat coming your way. I just took note of our next guest coming up. You guys are big shot. Hey, Eric, sorry. you listen to I'm me for sorry. one damn second. I'm sorry. Stop it with the damn crankbaits all the time. <laughs> no, don't sleep on that Nori's crank shot, man. I'm telling you, post on. Oh you will get your feelings hurt. I'm going to throw my DT6 and make out you just fine. So listen, we... we <laughs> Travis, you, you Travis, what happened when I threw that 1.0? I can't win here. You stick with that. I'm exactly, just, yeah. BTC. Ex- there you go, BTC. Think 1.0, but a little deeper. Hello, you got it now. You just up your game, bro. Them big post-spawn females on that six to eight foot drop, that's the one. I can go get my crankbait box. Do it, man. Please, right don't, please don't. We're actually <laughs> there's a bait right there, baby. Oh, that's a flat I no, swear no. if this show gets away from me right now. <laughs> it's, ahead, get, it's getting away. It's all cranking, baby. No, I really do have one that that Evic Eric needs to see. I do I, want to see. Come we on, all, Travis. we can all share. Damn, I would bet a hundred. I would bet a hundred dollars that you cannot guess who made it. All oh right, my God. Your, listen, we got. Get, there is a yeah. color too. That's a good color. Oh, that's the one. I lost <laughs> the show. I lost the show. <laughs> I lost the show. This is what people have been waiting for. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's grabbing his crankbait box. <laughs> hey, see what are you drinking? Here goes one scratched all up. I mean, this one, you know, it's the one that's got it's got the scars on it to show the that's proof of war wounds. That's 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 yeah, I get it. No, nah, dude, that's a red card. That's a red card bomber I gave him, man. Before I got we get into this, before we get into this mess, I, I just got more back. Before we get into this mess. <laughs> I want to let the viewers know that we do have a very mi- awesome mystery guest coming up. 
But all, all you guys want to do is fucking throw your chrome face around here. Who oh, I love, I love. I love Where can you get this Look, kind of crazy? How many, how many of them have you got? Uh, a lot. Oh, oh yeah. Ozark Shad, baby. Yeah, Ozark. Yeah, Ozark. How many, Shad, how many yeah. of the pogos you got? Dog, double hook model. What? Uh, I, I got some Travis, Just one more minute of this, and then, and then. Okay, fine. <laughs> just one more minute. Of this. <laughs> it's too obscene it's not to just sexy. enjoy. Oh, it. I like it. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. I, okay. it, it's a big Craig bait. It, it's a big. It's not the big humble. I can. I can tell okay. it's not the big humble. So this is this is just the regular uh, cliff pace, just the square. Yeah, just that's the, right. The, okay. This is this is. Look how much bigger that is. That's the jumbo man. It's like Travis my jumbo stuff. flat five right here. This is the. I big like humble. it. This that's a. Those humble. are one aughts. One aughts on the back of that thing. I freaking love it. What made? Oh you, yeah. What possessed you to want to find a big square bill like that? It was given to me. It was given to me, and they said you should try this big square bill like this. You know, I'm a big bait fan. In the, in the bait bait game, right? This is like one of like three that exist, and it mm. thumped. Wow, that looks, that's, that's that one to eat. So, so this is the regular flat side. This is the flat side. Did Travis just give up? Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was. So, so Matt, this is this is the Ozark Shad Flat A that Scooter was just showing, and this okay. is this is the Big Humble by Craig Powers. Look at the bait differential right there. Wow. Are you kidding me? When when they're eating like big gizzards, like, yeah. like in the spring on the Potomac on Rip Rap, when the white perch spawn, they're looking for a bigger meal, and that's why that BDS four can score big for you. I've got guys. That'll I'll be I'll be fishing with them. We'll be parallel and rip rap. They're in the front. I'm in the back. They're throwing a 1.5 and catching twos and threes. I'm in the back throwing the BDS four and catching the fours and fives. It's crazy. It can make a difference. It's crazy. That sounds like a trend. You got to try. Hey, hey, right no, now. you. Why the fours and fives? Dude, big baits, big bites. Not all the time. Or the fuzzy worm. The fuzzy <laughs> sometimes I mean, it's one or the other. Sometimes, sometimes, right, right, bait, right circumstance. You don't want to be feeling a hey fuzzy. Guys, just when let me know when you're ready for me to come back. Just let me. All right, we're, we're ready, man. We're ready, man. Yeah, but, oh, wait, by, no, the, by the way, one. by the way, real, real quick, you got? baits, big bites. Oh uh, my god, forty-three degree water. Oh, dude, you, you in a winter bad. league. How did you get one of those? With all kinds of traffic. That is so cool, man. How'd you they, get one it, of those? And they ate it. BTC, these are my these are the ones that I painted up. They came you to have me. them too. I got yeah, two he's got them. Them. I doctored up. Everybody's got those. Everybody. I've been trying for like four months. No, they don't. How do you, like you like that red gill plate I painted with my nail polish? Man, that's all nail polish. It's unbelievable. The well, it's my fairy dust, too. I can't get some fairy all. dust. There's a lot of fairy wand dust on that thing. You're fishing like a, I honestly you're fishing like a fairy. <laughs> but whatever you do, you do. Don't, don't knock it out. Yeah. <laughs> BTC. I honestly, I'm so impressed that you, after having Oliver Nye on your show, big bait like guy, had the confidence to go do that in a all uber clear body of water, super pressured and delivered. Did somebody say Uber? He did. I did. I did hear BTC. Uber, yeah. um, I'm I'll be honest. I, I had a little bit of yes. Tipping uh, my hat was, to you. Well, uh, thank you. And I'm going to tip my hat to the guys. I watched about two, three pounders in the first 15 minutes. Wow. I said, oh, man. Mike, I told you we need to bring a big rod. And I did bring a big rod and a big bait. And uh, I did that all day while he threw Shad Rap, number five Shad Rap. Unbelievable. Chad Taylor Shad Houston. Show. That's so crazy, Chad Chad man. Show. So, yeah. so snap or direct tie, first question of the day. And then walk me through your line setup. I'm curious, fluorocarbon or mono in the winter, what what did you choose and why? Well, uh, I mean, it was the last minute throw in because I loaded the boat with seven uh, jerk baits and rattle traps. Sure. And at the last, and Ned rigs and, and all that stuff and micro chatter baits. And at the last minute, I threw a big rod in there. Happened to have 20 pound fluoro on which wasn't ideal 
And at the, you know, a couple hours into the day, after I'd gotten a couple bites, uh, Mike had a reel with 17 mono on it. And, and I, I did a real spot and it made a big difference in what the yeah. bait was doing. Floated and, uh, the bait a little yeah, bit better for you. It's definitely a mono deal. But yeah. yeah, you know, we're in three foot of water, three, four, five foot, you know, black death, muck bottom. Mm. So, yeah. Hey, Travis has got. Go to taco. Hi, uh, Travis got, guys, uh, he's got talk about these hold. crazy we got, we ass the show back. big ass swim baits all the time. But I don't like yeah. letting people sit there waiting in the dark while we're. Where we're talking nah, about what bring them in. And lying you're throwing these stupid ass baits on, okay? Dude, That's this another up. time in you're laughing this up, dude. You're a buzzkill. Go ahead, bring this I'm other mystery guest on. We it better be hottest, we got the hottest YouTuber going on right now that's gonna oh, join us surely. That is Scooter. I'm gonna pull you off the off the uh off the feed real quick just to make the screen bigger. We're gonna bring you back and we're gonna bring Eric. Are you ready for this? Dude, I'm ready. BTC? No like way. That. Yes. This board wants to know. Dude. I've been listening to the, the banter for several minutes now. It's, up, it's giving me a heart attack. I feel like the intern here trying to manage everything. No, oh, me and ben, don't get me and Ben on big bait. You lose control again. Oh, I know. No. It's free range. It's after hours. Anything goes. Um, and what I'm going to do is kind of manage, not really manage, but monitor with the screens, make people bigger, smaller, whatever we got to do to have this conversation. Let's take it wherever we want tonight. If you guys have questions for Ben, if uh, questions for Matt, BTC, Eric, whatever, let's do this. <laughs> awesome. First question, what are we all drinking tonight? I got my red wine. <laughs> a cup of coffee. Uh, um, I got I got Wait. beer and scotch and whiskey. Whiskey, Ben's whiskey more, tonight. More like. Whiskey, nothing exciting. Just some turkey one hundred and one. Nice. All right, Scooter, you see us there. What do you got going on over there? Um, I got a little Jack and Coke. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. So where do we in. want to take this conversation? We're getting a lot of feedback here. Um. Wow. Okay. Wow. Look at the heat on this screen. This is crazy. I, this I is legit. Say, yeah, I just want to say, I, you know, since Ben was in town, and and here's here's an observation I had. So I don't I don't really pay much attention to YouTube stuff. I'm kind of old, and you know, just I, whatever. <laughs> Me too. But Ben came into town, and then and then Oliver and I, you know, a couple of weeks later, and and I got to tell you, man, you know, big fan of both of these guys. And what I really appreciated is how much respect that they had and appreciation that they both had. And they these guys are these guys are making a living in fishing and and they're very successful and they have huge fan bases. And um, you know, they're influencers, right? And they still really respect it, you know, the OGs, the guys and the guys out there on the tournament trails and so forth. And and I appreciate that because you don't always see that, right? And I mean, yeah. I know there's Whatever. I just, I really, I really did uh, appreciate that from from both those guys. And uh, man, I guess Ben, you, I, what are you putting up a, a, a Facebook video every single day? Yeah, man, like, Facebook um, every day, YouTube four to six times a week, and wow, just grinding, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm I'm out here in the best bass fishing place in the world, though, Omaha, Nebraska. Well known, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have fisheries well, over. Class. 500 acres within five hours of us and they all suck so wow you know getting it done thanks <laughs> for having me on though guys seriously i know we kind of surprised you by, by oh that's great here. i love yeah. it matt, first off matt I, I listen to you every single one of you guys's podcasts i about dropped five thousand dollars on bomber model 24 a's today after that shit jesus <laughs> i've awesome. listened to all your podcasts so far um the last the last i guess it's only been like three but yeah. um Huge cool. fan, man. Those those were awesome. incredible. The smallmouth talk learned a lot just in the three episodes. I, yeah, I appreciate guys, that, man. I'll, goods. I'll take a little drink for that. Nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, we should start like a group, maybe Salute. like uh, like a you know, like we make our own bait. Sometimes we'll 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 get all of our YouTube channels together. Is there something like that out there? Oh wait, there is. Never mind. 
Not I'm just saying. What's uh, that? No fishermen have done it yet. <laughs> there, I don't. I don't even have a YouTube account where I can comment on, on people's streams. <laughs> but, uh, the only uh, reason I got one was, yeah, was to watch. Was to watch him, right? Travis. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking. I got the I got the show running yeah. over here, and, yeah. and I see my, I see my son's name. <laughs> Glad I made the secondary list. Partner. <laughs> Partner. Well, I, I'm glad to be known as, you know, Epic Eric's partner. <laughs> right, right. I've heard I've so much my, about Scooter Lily. I'm changing, I'm changing all my Facebook stuff, everything, Instagram. Oh, yeah, and, oh, yeah I'm at, sure. At, at Epic Eric's partner. That's who no, I am. Oh, man. No, man. I go with, I go where the boat goes, man. I'm just I'm just walking <laughs> for the ride, man. I remember, man, this is pretty funny, man. Oh, they Scooter, can hear you coming. They can hear you coming. They call Scooter Scooter for a reason, man. He drives that Triton. He's a he's a good wheel man on some big water we fish. So he got his new Triton. We're 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 getting ready to launch tournament. I go down to reach for the handhold because I know I'm going to need it under the seat, yeah. and yeah, there is there, there is none. He ordered a boat without anything for me to hold on to because if I hold on to that metal <laughs> hole right there, I like have to sit for it. I can't like lock myself into the seat. So we we actually fashioned like a rope around the base of the seat, and I was like riding a bronco, man. It and was it, it was ridiculous. It he, he he held it for two or three days on Hartwell. It was crazy, and it was cold and wet. It was Every crazy. Time I grabbed it, man. Like my my hands would go frozen. But it, it was ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah, it did. It I worked. fixed it. I man. fixed it. It did. We installed I, one. So I got him right. his old. All right, hold on, hold on. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What do yeah. you got? All right. All right, it's enough of everybody talking over top of each other. Right on. The YouTube, the, the stream wants to know. They want to know what's everybody's opinion on Lunkers fishing the opens. That's what they want to know. Travis, All right, let's up. start. I'll start. Um, so I, I shared this earlier. I, I typically don't watch other people's stuff. Just I just don't have time. And so I, I, I knew who he was, but i probably been two years since I've seen the latest video of his. With that being said, I don't really listen to any other podcast either, but I was scrolling through Instagram yesterday and Dave Mercer was talking with, uh, with Luke and they had a little thing about this guy fishing the opens. And I, I listened to it. It was catchy. Uh, good conversation. I was, I was, uh, I was listening. Um, and again, I, I mean, I don't, there's a lot of people that are fishing the opens this year that haven't fished before. Uh, I'm not sure what to say to that. I mean, why I, I welcome everybody that, that thinks they have what it takes to fish in open. It's a great learning experience. It's either this, it's a good learning experience because you need some experience fishing big tournaments or you're ready to go compete and you want to go see how much damage you can do out there. So I think it's a, I, I think it's a great thing. Matt, what do you think? Man, you look at the success or, or the growth that the Bassmaster Opens had last year with a number of, of, of professional anglers who dove into the YouTube side, Scott Martin, uh, Brian Latimer, the, you can even throw Andrew Upshaw and Brad Hallman in there. Um, and you look at the increased press that, that that series had, they actually went live on the final day on Saturday with it which benefits all open anglers, obviously, uh, who are trying to grind it out with endemic sponsors. Uh, so you lose Scott Martin to the Elite Series, you lose Latimer back to the MLF Pro Circuit, uh, and you replace it with a guy with 1.88 million YouTube followers and then, wow. and then throw, uh, throw uh, Oliver Nye and Big Bath Dreams in there. It, I don't see anything but positive with it for the eyeballs and and, and the kind of notoriety uh, that that that's going to bring with it. And I'm really interested to see how he how he turns that into videos because they're not the normal videos that he's normally done with the tournament stuff. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see how it's done. And uh, I mean, dude, it's fishing. It's freaking fishing. Like you get into this big deal and you're like, oh, he does YouTube. Here. No, we're all trying to catch a bass. That's what it comes down to. So, yeah, bring listen, it. If you it, want to pay the it, entry it, fee and do it, travel all over, bring it. Yeah. So, I mean, for one, he's he's well off. Okay. He's not, you know, he, he's 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 going to be able to stay at really nice places and get all the greatest help and get a lot of waypoints from all 1.8 million followers. So, he's going to have a really yeah, good yeah, shot yeah. at 
doing it. What are you looking at me like that, Matt? No, you, you don't. don't I don't, you don't know how he's going to go about it. You have no idea. You're just assuming I that all that stuff. I guarantee that's how it's going to. This is how it's going to yeah, go. Yeah, dude, Travis, listen, 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 listen. Here's the, here's it's the reality. Get 87 of freaking spots on the night of late GPS. Dude, dude his, here's the reality of it, Travis. Right you know this. Where when you go somewhere, you've got small math crush. You've got a live stream. You've got a freaking empire. Now you're charging people for phone calls. You don't think when you go somewhere that people are going to call and give you information? You don't and that think that do, people I'm call for me? I mean, it, it's the same for all of us. It, 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 as long as it's legal and it's in it, it's how you translate that when the tournament hour started, my opinion. I'm curious to hear what Ben has to say. <laughs> Man, ran, true. Ben, ran, you're, you're going in the opens, right? So, I mean, what do you, what's your perspective on it? Oh, that's, uh, that's a tough one for me to answer. I know Rob as a uh, – a fisherman and as a person. So I don't think I can comment too much on that. That's but, fair. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's great for the sport to get as many eyeballs on as possible. I personally, like my part is in tournament fishing. I want to be a professional tournament fisherman since I was little. Um, wow. Didn't have it really in the cards to travel and take that much work off. So went the YouTube route and now I'm kind of coming full circle, going to get back into the more serious side of tournament stuff. So uh, I guess more eyeballs in the sport, more, no, more notoriety, the better. Um, sure. I, I think as a fisherman, he's going to struggle greatly, um, but maybe he, maybe he won't. Maybe he'll get better, and um, it's only good for the sport. So, Right on. I don't think you can struggle at one point. It's good to hear, Ben. I, uh, 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 helpers out there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I mean, it's not just 1.8 people with bad information, but he also has, a, you know, a good group of really, really successful anglers that he's that he's tied right. with. So, but Who's his, what's his what's his teammate? Does anyone like know his teammate? Year on the water, so there's that too. What's his teammates look like? Who's he teaming up with for these opens? Oh, no, no clue. Uh, but you know, no idea. Nobody but, knows. No, nah, but okay. you look you look at the guys that that you know. Uh, fuck with favorite rods and, and Guggen baits. And, you know, there's some good anglers. You got Cano yeah. and, and Wheeler and Scott Martin. So I don't know that they'll work together, but they might. Sure. They will. But, um, promise you that. I promise yeah, well, you that. All right. Is that but the thing like, right now? To say, like you know, have a team? Is that the thing, Brian? To, to, is, is this for anglers? Travis has got a team. You're saying this guy might have a team. Um, you know, uh, uh, Pangrak, did you have a team when you were out there? No, I mean I'm rolling with with Holman this year. Okay, team with Upshaw and stuff. Ben, do you have a team? No. <laughs> Scooter, Scooter not, the opens. Scooter, when you fished the opens, did you have a team or were you solo? No, I was by myself. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you have to have a team to like be competitive? Yeah. No, uh, no, and this, I mean, what you, what you probably would need is you do need a circle of some friends you can trust. I mean, not everybody's going to tell you good info. Right, I mean, ramp talk will hurt you worse. Sure. Just going out there by yourself sometimes. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, you can if, if you're not an you know, experienced. That's, that's the way I saw guy. it. Yeah, I mean, you're not an experienced tournament guy. You can have your best friend telling you exactly where to go and what to do, and catching someone else's fish Oops. is the hardest thing it's to the do. hardest thing yes it's, it's yeah. exactly yeah so you're better you're, you're kind of better off to i mean maybe financially it's great to have a team to hang out with and rent a house together but i'm gonna tell you what sometimes that will spin you out listen depends to your what your goals are depends no, on your goal. I mean, Scooter, it's... Scooter, i hold up i i gotta stop you right now because it's all how you form the team and what your agreements are prior to joining the, t the team you keep talking about some inform. If you have a team that's one hundred percent, all information's given out that night. Game plans are set. Everybody's on the same page. I think it can be very beneficial. But if you got that one guy that's a little shady, that's a little off, that's when you're going to run into problems. It may take you a year to find that out. Mm. Me and you teamed up, Travis. We were we were team. We were a team at the Coastal I Championship love that, dude, because I. Because I've my biggest teams have only ever been one other person, so it was my buddy Matt Stasiak a lot of times on on the St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario, where we shared everything. I knew what where he caught him, when he caught him, and where he's exactly where he's at. And that's what Matt and I exactly did 
in the tournament on Cumberland. Not saying I'm going to go fish Matt's fish or he's fishing I mean, mine. We make that decision come tournament time what we're going to do because all information was already laid out there. And that's, I mean, it's, that's the only that's, way you can fish together. Is well, that that's way. a great example of, of, of it working together, but it can also work against you. I mean, you don't, but you ain't going to know when that time's, you if that's know, happened until it's happened. A, you can judge a person pretty good, Scooter. I think it takes some time, though. That's that's a that's a legitimate okay. legitimate issue. Time. You guys got to you got to find a system for what works. I mean, everyone out there is crazy competitive. I'm crazy competitive, and so I've always struggled to share information with people that I'm going to be competing against. So I think everyone's personalities are different, and it's a super mm -hmm. hard dynamic to find the right group of people. Yeah, I think it's yeah. hard too. It depends what your goals are. Like my goal is not to win an open this year. My goal is to qualify for the Bassmaster Elite Series. I feel like it's a safer bet. It's easier. I'm giving up probably the potential to win a tournament to increase my odds of a top 40 finish, which at the end of the year will lead to an end goal. Very interesting. Yeah. So go, you're focused Matt. on limits. Yeah, Matt. Cheers yeah, to you, get brother. There, bro him. Come Salute. on. And I can never do that. Salute. Uh, but but that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. That's the game plan you have to have sometimes if you've got a set goal. You, you I mean, were fishing a win every time. I was fishing I a win every time, and that's sure. why I, I either zeroed or heroed. And that's that's mm -hmm. how it went. I, I mean, at, at the place I'm at now, I would rather have a 60% chance of finishing in the top 30 and then oh, and then reduce my chance of finishing in the top 10. Like, I'm going to take the biggest safety net. I mean, I don't think yeah. that's fishing like a bitch. I think that's fishing smart. That's what works for me. No, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's what, yeah, I'm not saying it is. It's, it's a great plan. Yeah. If that's, you know, if you, if you make it work throughout the year. Now that they take mm. the top five, top uh, top five guys for the all nines, that's the way to go. Yeah, Matt. But it doesn't Matt. work for like Brian when he's out on the when he's out in the in the two man in the Wednesday nighter in Jersey. Like that's a winner yeah, go you home. Got, you got to go. Yeah, you got. I mean, that's first or nothing. You're not yeah. fishing for you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Matt. A really uh, brilliant winner here once said: bridges, riprap, or marinas. It's got to be BMR bridges, riprap, marinas, and ramps. Word. DMR Sorry. squared. Sorry, Brian. Brian, Brian, talk to me. What'd you have? Oh no. Um, yeah, no, win or go fuck yourself, right, Matt? That's what that's the way it is. Um, <laughs> but I didn't get the way second on the I'm with, I'm with Brian. That's the plan. Well, all, I, I mean, along the lines of what Ben Yeah, along the lines of what Ben said, you know, I, I have met the guy and had interactions with him. They weren't great. I didn't care for him. Um but that's how that situation went. You know, I don't have a high opinion of him, but hopefully uh, we'll meet again and, and, and that could change. Um, you know, clearly he's very successful. He's he's very, very smart business guy. I don't know how good of an angler he is, uh, but it's very interesting. I'm glad he's doing it. I'm excited for it because it's interesting, right? It's not boring. Um, so, dude like bring it. it it's fantastic that he's jumping in there that impresses the hell out of me because you know he's he's got a lot to risk man he's he's made himself very successful uh as a fisherman and with without being proven in any fashion whatsoever and now he's throwing himself in there and uh and that's risky but he's doing it and that that's impressive that's so i, I gotta give him that you know my interactions with him weren't great but you know it, it is what it is BTC, no, it, I, it'll, it'll be fun to watch. That's for sure. I don't think he has a lot to risk. And what I mean by that is he's a, he's an entertainer. His, his fans that follow him are not there to really learn about, you know, you know, how to finesse, like, like that show <laughs> we did last Saturday, Eric, we gave up yeah. some stuff. That would help people like tremendously if they wanted to become a better finesse angler. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm really I'm brand new. I'm nowhere near Ben's size on YouTube, but I found this out real quick. When I put a video up of me getting yelled at fishing the marina versus me talking about <laughs> how to fish a drop shot perfectly in 30 feet of water, I get more views getting kicked out of a marina or salvaging a sunken boat on a river. Then I do talking about my fishing abilities. So he's not losing nothing by his fan base are just going to be like, they're there to be entertained and just waste time on YouTube. They're not necessarily there to learn something that's going to help 
make them fish better than the next guy. Does that make sense or am I off on this? Maybe that's I'm not off. accurate, man. That's that's yeah. that's what YouTube is. That's it's tough being someone like you or someone like me who has a fishing background and tries to actually share some good information and walking that line of being successful by mixing in a lot of the other stuff that you know is going to get more views and you're constantly walking that line as a full-time YouTuber like I am. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So he, he might bring some entertainment value to these opens. Somebody just asked, how will he deal with the co-anglers? Could he make that part of the fun, you know, or the entertainment? It, it should be interesting. Losing can be funny, right? It depends on how you, how you bring it. I don't know him as a person, Ben, you know him personally. You know, if he gets his if he gets the shit kicked out of him or he has a great tournament, I mean, it could be fun either way, right? Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll politely say that if he doesn't kill one of his co-anglers or <laughs> if, he, if he finishes the season through the entire schedule, I will be shocked. What? I'll just say that. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Hold on, wait, wait. Over under. I got, I got, I got oh, one. Right. Yeah, one, over Brian. under. Will he? Will. Will he weigh more or less fish than Jason Christie did in the NFL? Matt? Is is he fishing uh, opens? No, not that one. The other one. Well, I know that. <laughs> Matt, I know you're talking about oh, the other Jason Christie. The other Jason Christie. Ah. Dude, I, I don't know. I don't know the guy. So, I mean, all I could do is take it at face value and what he said and what him. I've heard for his interview. So, I mean, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. Oh, I'm, that wasn't the question. Is he going to catch more or less? <laughs> He's nailing well, you, Tiger. He doesn't have to do very well to what, catch more. I was <laughs> say, will he suck more or will he suck less? That's what I. That's what I meant to say. Did um, Did he? I didn't watch the video. shot of Jason Christie, all, not Bunkers. All nine tournaments. I think he's fishing one oh, division of the one. Opens and one division of the Toyota Series. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, well, I, got, I, got an, I just realized something, guys. I've gotten phone calls from both Jason Christie and Lunkers TV. Tonight? And they were angry. <laughs> no, tonight? No, not tonight, but they were both angry. And I got those phone calls. So can oh, you all sure. cheers that? Yes. <laughs> Everybody raise your glass. We've right. all been there, dude. Welcome both. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? I don't give a fuck. Honestly, <laughs> I'm, I'm – Matt – so my dream team, I'm going to tell you guys my team, okay? I want to go for, through my team for the old Northerns. And first of all, I'm a, I am committed to these guys way, way before I even knew Matt was going to fish the Northerns. When you talked to me about it and Bradley, you, when, when you, or uh, when, when Hallman, when you guys talked, I didn't know you were fishing the Northern Open. So uh, I have a, a buddy named JP who's a stick on Champlain. Love the guy. Great guy. My buddy, 12-pound Tom Knee, his nickname's 12-pound pound Tom Knee because all he can do is catch 12 pounds in every tournament. Except my, for when he wins the one he won the boat. when he won the yeah. I-5. Right, right. While right. right. you were sitting 30 yards from him. And then, of course, myself. Of course. And then we added a new member yesterday. Oh, uh, now it's four? Yes, there's four of us. Well, who um, would you and do tell. Just a, you, you guys wouldn't know him, but a good, but he's actually in the top 52 smallmouth bass anglers podcast. Uh, Gary Atkins, he's from Wisconsin. Uh, I fished some team tournaments with him in the past. Solid dude. He, he's, I think he basically he's won about 80 grand last year just fishing local stuff in Wisconsin. So the guy's a, an angler. Wow. Uh, I, we trust him. I think it's going to be fun. But I had the blast, dude. Matt and I fished perfectly together, dude, in that Cumberland. And I'm so depressed that we don't get to go to the ABA championship on Chickamauga and, and all that stuff kind of blows right now because I was looking forward to that. But if I had to pick my two favorite guys, it would be Matt Stasiak and Matt right here that I've worked with in the past. So BTC, what about we, never Brian? Traveled, we never worked together. We fished together. You jump in my boat when, oh, when I, I, Gary, I, I run down to Kerr Lake and fish with Scooter, and I ain't got no partner. You're my backup, bro, and you know that. I, so you take your Greek G crack or whatever Travis, you call I, it. I, I, <laughs> G crack. Hey, BTC, he's talking about real tournaments, not local piddly yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. He's talking about like real tournaments, opens. Yeah. I, you know, what we fish locally doesn't I'll count. Be on, I'll be honest. I, I, wa I, I wasn't even listening. I was still stewing over okay. my last rant. 
I was ready to <laughs> fucking rip both their heads off. <laughs> hey, back you, to you, rip, guys. you want to rip? You want to rip Jason Christie's head off? Is that what you just said? No, no, no. Move on. We got we got Ben Milliken here crying out loud. I know Ben Milliken. Milliken. Milliken fishing, man. Ben, Ben, I just got a nice six cents order in today, man. Strong work. What'd you get? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I listen to you when we stream together. Good, good. So from suspending quakes. Mm. Oh, wait a second. That's mm. right, man. You're the one that stole my my co-host. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to track all these jumps down. Every every YouTuber no. on the planet. Eric no. Epic Eric's the hottest freaking come on. Next thing I know, he's gonna be on BTL. He's gonna be on Ike Live next week. Oh, I can't be with you, Travis. I'm on this show this week. It's like ridiculous. I'm just a struggling freaking YouTuber with 28,000 followers trying to freaking make a couple grand a month to survive. And you guys are just raping me, basically. He can't, <laughs> afford, can't even afford raping. sleep. Raping. Oh, my gosh, man. The pay's better at those other stations, man. They, they, at least I get, <laughs> I get some free baits every once in a while, man. I'm still waiting on them jig heads and them get bit tubes you promised me two years ago. Where is my package? Jeez. I thought we were trading like bartering and baits. My time, a few free lures that you get from your sponsors. Travis will give me like six, <laughs> six, six, six like tube heads, but he goes like, hey, dude, I need this uh prototype jig that I'm making with Beast Coast. Can you tie it up for me? I'm like, Travis, you only sent me six. I, I thought you were going to send me like 30. He sent me six jig heads, man. Six, Whatever. Matt. Right. There it Anyways. is, man. I, it's a one-way street, bro. It's a one-way street, man. All right, I got a fishing-related question for you, Travis, Mr. Smallmouth yeah. Expert, because yeah. I, I sit there for hours and listen to your podcast. <laughs> and I just get all these questions in my head because we, we're predominantly largemouth around here. We spend a lot of time traveling to fish for smallmouth. But as the Great Lakes guy – I have a tube question for you. Ooh. Okay. Have you guys ever done anything with adding a, like a little willow leaf blade behind a tube? Because Ooh. we've got a little rig that we do with an inserted tube jig head where you take a little bit of wire, like a, a, a nine strand type of wire, you run okay. it down and you get it just the right length to where you put a ball bearing swivel and um, just past the tentacles and you have just the smallest willow leaf flash. And started using those this last fall in a little bit more stained water, like three, two to three foot visibility. Uh -huh. And uh, works real well. Just curious if that's a Great Lakes thing at all. Well, well, first of all, I want to say that's very, um, that's an interesting concept. It's certainly not done, uh, to my knowledge, that much on the Great Lakes. Um, I, I, I see it. I, I'm going to go, I'm going to take it a different direction here. But your typical dragging a tube. <laughs> um I, I it'll work will it work better how do you judge that i'm not sure just but, curious if you, if you guys have but, ever done anything like that yeah but cracking a tube mm. moving that tube quickly through the water giving it three quick jerks as it's dropping with that willow leaf in the back now you're onto something mm-hmm it's uh, it's especially been effective in current, like heavy current river situations where you're mm -hmm. sandbar fishing or island head fishing. Um, basically, just you need to draw them in, and usually it's it's more of like a, a late, it's like a early fall, mid fall thing when they really get on the bait fish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, you know, on, on a, a bait fish, a white type of tube. But listen, yeah. so so. I'm learning too because I'm not the biggest tube cracker out there. I've not committed to tube cracking like I should be, based on. <laughs> hey, Randy, this is fucking, this is a big deal right here that we're talking about. When you you talk mean you're not? Boys, you're you're when, not a tube you, cracker. When you talk to these boys up there on Lake Erie, okay, in the Great Lakes, that like I have, I've talked to 35 now of the top smallmouth anglers wow. in the country, That's and impressive. cracking a tube comes up in conversation almost daily with these guys. How about it's that? something I need to start doing and I've been missing the boat and I'm going to admit it. If anything I've learned from these podcasts so far, it's that. And there's so much more to it than just dragging a freaking tube. Like I've been doing for years and that could definitely work. Yeah. And I'm not the guy to, 
I'm like, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to have the right rod. I'm going to have the right line for next year to do this technique. Um, but it amazes me how often that technique is used, especially on Lake, Lake Erie out of the other tube crack and Travis. You'd know it. I'm Snack the time. Time. Crack and Travis. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's yeah. good. Travis, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Travis. it. I wish, was, I wish. Like? I, go ahead. No, go, go, go. You're wrong. I have a list. There's, there is certain topics coming out on the podcast that I want to, I, I don't, I'm being selfish. I don't want to air before, before you do night. that. I, yeah. All right. Now, before you do that, I want to go back. We're talking tubes and we got Ben on. Dude, so Ben, that day we fished, man, dude, bro, you showed me something. For real. Oh yeah. I want to hear about that because I all I heard about, about was it, but... you guys were in a snowstorm. The bite was tough and Ben was like cracking on him. So can you share some of that with us? Oh yeah, I mean, man. I don't know what he wants to tell you, but but I can tell you that <laughs> he absolutely showed me something. So, go ahead, Ben. <laughs> uh, well, I, I fish a tube maybe a little bit different a lot of times um, for large mouth and small mouth. But basically, whenever we got cold water and clean water, um, I drag a tube on an unpegged Texas rig. I don't like a tube jig head that much, um, but especially when it's cold and you can't feel very well, you know, it's already hard to feel uh, the bottom. The, the bottom doesn't really jump out at you when, when you have that tube jig head in there. It's all dull and mushy, but um, I, I pull it on like a heavy Texas rig, tungsten weight, 15 to 20 pound test fluoro and drag it unpegged on Texas rig, smoke purple and clean water. Wow, and we catch them everywhere on that. And mm smashed them that day what was it 40 low 40 degree water brian yeah low 40s um air temp was mid to upper 30s and yeah. it was blowing and yeah. snow showed up that we didn't expect yeah it's just i, I know a lot, a, lot of guys guys don't don't a lot of guys don't texas rig it in those situations they flip it obviously but yeah that's something i've done around the country whenever you get that super clean five to ten foot visibility water and especially rocky lakes, but clean water, stuff like that. We were pulling it through just standing timber um, on, on steeper breaks and stuff. Ozark lakes, we freaking destroy them, mm. dragging the smoke purple tube, unpegged Texas rig. That's like the number one color on the Susquehanna River, if you can believe that. Like Jeez. right out of PA. That was when I went smallmouth fishing, for, and that's the number one color on my western Maryland lake, smoke purple. That's crazy you're saying that. Clean they, water, man. That's, it, what, yeah. I call, that's what, what I call them all. Yeah. Smoke purple. Smoke purple. Isn't that crazy? Smoke purple. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I don't oh, know what eerie. it is, but they, they eat it. You got to you gotta tear out about all but four or five of the tentacles, too. That's that's part of the deal, too. I won't, probably shouldn't have shared that. But. You thin it out. That's awesome. Yeah, because it's, it's nope. the same. Whoops. You know, what? You, you, what? You, it's like you catch 20 or 30 fish on one tube, and then it starts catching fish more and more. The more chewed up and sucked up it gets, you know? It's like um, a jig. So. It's like a jig sometimes. Exactly. So I, just start doing that I, I, I just tear all those tentacles off to get get it going. Get right how, to it. How particular, Ben, are you or, are you are with your tubes as far as, you know, how they're made, the construction, the the texture of a tube? Do you get into that? Or I'm just curious. I I keep it simple. I, I just throw the poor boy. This is all I throw. Okay. So salty double dip. Everybody's sure. everybody's writing down poor boys right now. I uh yeah, I, I there's a there's a handful of tubes that I've found over the years that I just have really huge confidence in. Believe it or not, I really like that Bass Pro Shops double dip tube. I use, one, that, I use that a lot, especially more for largemouth than smallmouth. When they make that smaller size, the two and three quarter, I don't like that at all. I, the Get Bit Baits, an uh, independent company out of Wisconsin, they they make a, a really good tube, no doubt. That's a good that, one. I really like that tube, dude. I do yeah, too. You got the uh, Dobson was on here the other day though. Was, was on here the Berkeley two and a half inch Berkeley power tube. So. Was it really? Guess guess who's got a wall full of those 
critters right now. What? You, yeah. you bought the Berkeley power Dude, tubes? If dude? Scott Dobson tells me to buy a two and no three quarter inch freaking Berkeley tube, I'm going to buy them. All right. So question. Is it about the scent? The profile? What uh, is it? So, Colors, so the Strike King, the like, Bitsy tube by Strike King. I wish I could. I have a. I have an eighty pound sack of tubes. Okay, yeah, eighty pounds. I when I go to a tournament, I have to have mm -hmm. a buddy help me lift that box into the back of the truck. That's that's, that's the tube deal I'm in. You so pussy, you can't lift eighty pounds. Well, you know what I mean, brother. Because <laughs> I got my tube heads in there that's too, right. bro, and that weighs a lot as well. Okay, the lead. Gotcha. Um. Gotcha. Anyways, <laughs> the Bitsy tube by Strike King, and there's a couple key colors. I love throwing the Bitsy tube. I, I, dude, I'm fascinated by tubes. Uh, there's Magnum tubes out there. There's tubes you wouldn't even believe that you shouldn't even be throwing for smallmouth, and and they'll work. I, I don't even know where I'm going with this. I just love tubes. So I just love <laughs> <it. laughs> <laughs> Long cylindrical objects. <laughs> hey, the, yeah, besides that, there's slender tubes. Okay. <laughs> you know, you're you're a slender yeah. tube, dude. <laughs> your standard That's green and half. What's your favorite flavor? Okay. And, uh -huh. <laughs> dude, I'm fishing the opens. I'm fishing the opens right now. You didn't I'm even not gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to give. I'm not going to give away my flavor just yet, okay? <laughs> We're picking up your flavor right now, bro. It's all I got out big there. events coming up this year. I don't need a uh, Dugan <laughs> boy or whatever getting whiff of my favorite <laughs> flavor, okay? I don't need him getting whiff of my flavor. <laughs> flavor I got to leave right now. <laughs> you guys know what my flavor is. I know the loyal listeners, <laughs> they know my flavor. <laughs> I'm dead, man. Stop it! You're killing me. <laughs> well, while yeah. we're on that topic, I just went and bought all the domain names for Smallmouth Crusher, Travis Manson on OnlyFans. <laughs> so he'll have to come with me when he starts his OnlyFans too. I I own them all, baby. <laughs> domain wars. <in> <laughs> Just leave Large Mouth Crush alone. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I get Eric, oh, like Eric. oh, no, you don't. I bought it. I bought it on the phone with Travis one day. I'm like, dude, we're breaking up. I'm going Large Mouth Crush. They're going Large Mouth Crush. <laughs> I, had, I was ready to push the button. We were having an argument. I go, I bought it, bitch. I got hey. it. Yo, Tom, Tom in the comments, we got a lot of feedback here. Uh, I'm dying, man. I'm gonna go get a beer. Do you guys want to talk tubes? Let us know where you want the conversation to go because I would love to talk about tubes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have Travis. Oh, I got to say about have... tubes. I'm crying, man. There's so much. Yeah. I'd rather talk about it's the fucking tubes. Travis is so cool. You stick away to it. You identified as a DT6, dude. Why are you talking about tubes so much? Uh, Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'd rather talk about a debate or something. I don't know. All right. All right. No, man. Just... Tubes. Man, what are you Do you want a tube? Have you caught a smallmouth before? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> one. All right, Travis, tell us about your Call three one. inch tube. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you guys carry around. Let, let me just gather a few items here, okay? <laughs> items. <laughs> he's going to go grab his tube. <laughs> he's going to go grab his tube. Is that he's gone again. Oh, I'll carry it in here. He is uh, gone again. I like the hat. That's a Gretzky helmet, bro. That's an old Jofa. <laughs> What's Brian? Right that's that's <laughs> an old Jofa. Yeah, that's right. Oh, my gosh, dude. Hey, man, how's Captain Fritz like? Fucking Captain Chaos. Oh, uh, what? How's, what do you say? Fritz? How's Fritz? BTC, you got an update on Fritz? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know we were putting that out there. I didn't know either. Is he coming on? <laughs> um, well, no. Nah. All right. <laughs> He's in the hospital and said, call me in, a, in eight days. So Okay. That's Say all your prayer for, man. Hey, Brian, question That's for right. Why don't you take Oliver to Merrill? Um, you know what, man? I would have. Uh, Mike kind of put the – like. I didn't, you know how when me and you fished, Mike was like, all right, this is your day. I, you know, soccer, you got, you got, you got Ben this day. I didn't have a day with Oliver necessarily until nine o'clock that morning when Mike says, dude, I'm out. 
Well, why didn't they take him to Merrill? That's the only place that was awesome. He uh, he ruled the North out. And you know what? You know what, Ben? Dude, Oliver got a bad week here. Like, it freaking sucked universally that week. It just, it just yeah. did. It's Everything North aligned. It's Philadelphia. And, 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 when and is there ever a good fishing opportunity here? No, but seriously, like, you know what was really, really impressive about Oliver? Dude, he was here for six fucking days on the water. He was almost two weeks here, and he caught two bass in six days on the water. And the dude smiled the whole time. He was so positive. Like, you know, one of the benefits of, like, doing this whole thing, this is a project for me. I'm, I'm a contractor. I, I remodel houses. This, this whole thing is, like, you know, this is side work. And it's cool. Hold on. I'll put my hood over my helmet. So, um, but, like, one of the real benefits is meeting you guys. You know, Matt and Ben and and, and Epic Eric and, and Travis's three-and-a-half-inch tube, Scoot. You know, um, Marizu was one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life, dude. I had this air of just positivity that came off of this dude that stuck with me for days. And um, and Oliver had something very similar to that, you know. And it dude, after six days in Jersey with a camera guy and all that pressure and paying that camera guy and catching two bass, he was still so positive. And that, that was encouraging, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I that's the way he was with me too, man. When we went out to California, I spent a week with him, and I probably asked him 500 questions. He's probably so sick of me by the time I left, but um, I was just picking his brain the whole time. But we, we kept going. You know, California is a different animal. We would travel three or four hours from where he was staying to the lake, and we'd get to the lake, and you'd spend like $60 to get your boat inspected, just dump it in the water, and then we'd go out for the whole day. Really? And he'd be like, yeah, we might not see any fish, but we have a chance to catch a teen, so we're going to do it. And we just threw eight to ten inch swim baits the whole day, and you wouldn't be able to tell if he caught a 50-pound bag or didn't get a follow or a bite the entire day. Just great perspective and positivity the entire time. And uh, he's always the same, man. Every time I, I text him or call him or anything, he's always very, very positive. So – um, and once again, we're talking about bringing more good eyes um, to the opens. Uh, I'm very excited to see him doing that and, and him getting on there. And when he was on the iClive podcast, you guys touched a little bit on his win at the uh, Big Bass Bash uh, at Lake of the Ozarks. That's a huge thing for us here in the Midwest. That's a big tournament. It's kind of a, uh, a sideshow type deal because, I mean, there's like two or 3,000 boats on the lake. But Oliver was truly – like passing wow. in Minnesota oh, and Texas between guiding for the season and decided that he was going to stop a Lake of the Ozarks, a place that he had never been before. And he practiced for like a half day and then he went out and he lost a fish that would have won the tournament. And then he caught a fish that won hundred thousand dollars in the tournament. Again. So that was, that was pretty cool and pretty special. And yeah. Um, he isn't a super accomplished tournament angler, but he's a very, very sharp, positive, intuitive angler. So I'm excited to see how he does. That's awesome. Yeah, man. 100%. Dude. Seriously, like, he's just he's just somebody that's really, really, really good for fishing. Bottom line, man, he's good for fishing. He's good for the he's good for the community, and I would encourage everybody to to to, to follow him and and uh, you know root, cheer him on. I'm a fan. Me too. I got my helmet on. <laughs> yeah. Don G in the comments uh, has a pretty funny comment. I'm not going to say it on the air, but. What? Oh, yeah. It's the one that. about the padded room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about me and padded room. What was it? I don't know. Oh, I'm just seeing the comments. Right, right. Now. That's good stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, com the comments on these live streams are live, man. Let me tell you, They're, people are awesome, man. We yeah, got let's some get. Uh, listen, we still have a record crowd watching us. Um, two hours and nineteen minutes in tonight. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank everybody again, BTC. Thanks for setting this up. Without you, it'd just be me and Scooter. No, nah, man. Thank you, dude. <laughs> nah, man. He Dude, that, listen, man. Ben Ben wanted to be on, dude. I saw his comment on 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 your Instagram. He wanted. Oh, to that's be on, awesome. 
Heck yeah, man, that is awesome. Boy. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Love it. I'm going to listen to every single one of those 52 podcasts. Oh, yeah. Yes, so far, yes. incredible stuff. It was so cool listening to everything about the hair jig and the spy bait. And that was crazy listening to Ken Golub's talking about his analytical approach to catching smallmouth in those those lakes as a as a uh, um, what engineer. Um, yes. Breaking down, he had thirty nine baits. Was it? Yes. Thirty nine baits. That Man, I'm impressed, dude. Baits. That's uh, like, how do you know yeah. that? Yeah. Um, Isn't that crazy? No, that's great. I, I'm glad you appreciate it because it's 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 a lot of work, obviously, and I. I'm just a, a smallmouth. I love fishing for smallmouth, and I love what these guys have to say, and that's why I wanted to bring this out there to you know to the general public. But I, I'm just going down the list. I don't know if you guys know a guy named Jared Rohde. Um, and in the comments, let me know he's he's next. Ron Nelson. So the Gray Buck episode, it's coming out. It shouldn't be coming out before the Oneida tournament the open, but I'm going to do it because I'm not going to be a selfish prick. Mm. Um, I am going to take his, I am going to take his advice and I'll be, you know, if, if you guys have that opportunity to do what he's saying in this, uh, uh, anyways, Josh Douglas, Ryan Salzman knows how to, yes. Let me guess. Is he talking about, is he talking about graphing, when the grass isn't up to find the rocks. So that's part of it. Yes. Them. Very good. Very yeah. good. Okay. Now, yeah. Well, is that, yep. what else was there? Cause I mean, he talked about that. We had him on Bass U. We actually co-hosted. He drove, he's not too far from us. <laughs> right. Here. Right. And, um, yeah. And that was I really was interesting. Su- he talked about going to Oneida when the grass wasn't up and finding mm-hmm. the, the, you know, the structure on the flats where the grass is going to be. Yes, he he does he does talk about that quite a bit. He dropped a bunch of stuff, probably too much. Even Scott Dobson, the the first person I interviewed, he after the show he kind of he felt anxious maybe, or he's like, man, I, yeah, we talked about a lot of stuff I probably shouldn't have. So it was cool. It's cool to see that. <laughs> um, in March, uh, my buddy Kyle Carpenter is going to be talking about a rigging. If you a rig for smallmouth. And you think you know what you're doing? You have no clue until you listen to this podcast. Ooh. I, 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 I'm not even. That's not a joke. Say the lady. Oh, joke. we. Oh no, you told me about it. I told you about it, Eric. I know. I know. Uh, Travis, you guys right? don't know how to a rig until you listen to this. Yes. How about that? Oh uh, yeah. I haven't heard the Dobson one yet, but I could tell it's legit. Pete hit me up and says. We need Dobson on on a uh, Bass University. <laughs> there you go. So you listen to him on your shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, we so got now, Casey. Now we're fucking now we're I know. know. I got nothing. Just yeah, just nah. leave me by my anyways. Casey Smith, we got coming up. Cal Clemson, he's a, a Ontario angler. Matt Becker, of course, knows Lake Erie very well. Gary Atkins, my teammate for this year, oh, wait, the uh, northern. Wait. Yep. Go ahead. Um I speak for every you know, every dude out there under 30 years old, can you get Matt Becker's sister on? <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know who she is, but we'll look into that. Um, All right. <clears throat> in fact, hopefully, hopefully Alex, the intern here, save this clip and we'll, uh, we'll take Matt Becker tomorrow with it. Um, yeah, mark that Alex. <laughs> Joe Baylog, of course, Two, Joe Baylog, well known. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know Joe Booker, if that name rings a bell. Uh, we had Paul Nick on, of course, uh, JJ Judd, a stud from Champlain. Dale Strohshine knows, uh, Door County, Wisconsin very well. Austin Neary knows how to catch those fish down the, uh, what is it, Eric? Carolinas? Yeah. Uh, Western Carolina. Western Chitou, Carolinas. Yep. Chitou, Glenville, yeah. Dream, uh, dream catcher. That's I'll, right. Yeah. Dream catcher. Chris dream Aldane. Catcher. Chris Aldane opened my eyes. Uh, more than anyone so far, to some obvious stuff that just didn't really? hit me. Yeah, so I'm ex- I'm excited about that. Um, just some things to take in the future when you're fishing for big smallmouth. Michael Simonton, of course, he had some really good information. He's actually going to be on our live stream here in a couple of weeks uh, as well. 
I have not gotten a hold of Al Linder, so I sent him a message through his uh, website. If anybody's got, uh, I'd like to get him on. He needs to be on this. I feel. Oh, yeah. Travis, uh, do, you have, do you have his phone number? I don't know. Uh, no. I'll, I'll be talking to Al shortly. I'll get. I'll get you. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> I talked talk to him before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. ATC, man. It's just crazy. Joe Lucarelli, Caleb Colwell, Joe Raymond, of course, Susquehanna, Joe Wood, Steve Clapper, Mark Zona. Now, I sent Mark a message through uh, Instagram about three days ago. Haven't heard back. Now, I know you guys know uh, Mark and I kind of – he thinks that I'm the one – who kept them up all night at the Bassmaster Classic and was really rowdy outside his hotel room, and it wasn't me. It might have been, but it wasn't. And so maybe it, that's why. Yeah, hold okay. Up, hold up. Stop the mic. It, it might have been, but it wasn't. Can you? I wasn't you, with anyone else except me. And if well, I was yeah, loud obnoxious. This, this past year? I wasn't yeah, with He any, came out of the room. Apparently at 4 a.m. He came out of the room in his underwear. And I just went down the elevator just before anyone. I could <laughs> see it. But that was what happened. Anyways, Joe Fonzi, Ryan said. Uh, Seth Fighter was great. Art Ferguson, still trying to get him tracked down. Uh, Bertrand was awesome. Josh, Josh was a really good interview. Really good. But honestly, Josh, I've never met Josh. I never talked to him in my life, but we clicked. And he's probably with that with everyone, his personality. It was just like we known each other for years. And we were just bullshitting he's about smallmouth. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's like an Frank anti on his TV. Yeah, okay. Ahead. If you guys know Bob Azumi. I need to get him on. I cannot get him to respond. What Frank about Scalic, Uh Didn't invite him. Okay. Just checking. Hey, I, uh, I already got Frank covered. Frank called. He said, hey. He said, you know the smallmouth crush guy? I said, as a matter he, of fact, I do. Did he really? And he said, no, I swear. And he goes, he's a buddy of yours? I said, yeah. He goes, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, because hey, he, he said, what do you know about him? And I yeah, said, guess what? I this said, is what he he's, does to me. he's a mix I, between a vampire and a lizard. <laughs> but you need to be in this series. I called. I go to. I go to. I go to. I go to Frank. I go. I go. I send an email. A typical email. I send to everybody. He goes back. He goes. Uh, well, send me a link. I'll take a look at it. And then he I'm like, okay. you, man. He's just betting you. I understand that, but I'm just like, okay, bro, it's on now. I go back to him, and guess what? I didn't follow up with him. I ain't chasing him down. I was getting ready to move on to the next guest. Well, he did his homework and he knew All that right. I knew you. So then right. I cleared him and he said, Hey, I forgot to tell you this because I called you the other day and I went off on some rant instead of telling you. But the reason I was uh -huh. calling you was to okay. tell you that Frank Scalish said, dude, he's in on this, on okay. the small mouth, crush right. small mouth right. series. Good, good. Bob Azumi. Yes. Hold can on. We, BC. Can I'll, I weigh I'll, in real quick? Yes. Oh, um, real quick. I agree with you, Travis. But I think you're right, Matt. I, B, scale has crushed it for BTL, so you should get him on. All right, I will. Paul Why Mueller. Would you do uh, it if the motherfuckers don't want to be on. Fuck them. Yeah, screw him. On Fair the next enough. one, Paul Mueller. He wants to be on. Yeah, he does. Chad Chad Pipkins. You know, unfortunately, he just lost his father, so I didn't want to like. Uh, you know, I'm going to give him some time. He'll probably be on later. And then here's what I thought: the final guest, guest number fifty-two. I thought I would have Mercer on because he can catch smallmouth, but he's been around all these guys that know and live and breathe smallmouth fishing. And I'd love to hear his take when it comes to all the guests I've had on for the year. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's super cool. And if anyone else, we got four or five. I really need some more Western guys. If anyone else could maybe just send me a, if anyone has any ideas of some other guests, we have about four or five we need to fill, if you can think of any. Um, I pulled a gunfish out of Curtis Richardson's leg about 30 seconds before he weighed in in the Forest Wood Cup one year. Right. He was all jacked up, jumped out of his boat, gunfish right in the calf. Oh! Uh, and I was sitting there covered, covered, you know, right for Basso, and he's like, does anyone know the line trick? And I was like, well, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> Pop that sucker out, and he went and waited in. <laughs> Oh, here, real quick. I know, Ben, you got something to say, but uh, Jay Kennedy in the comments, the Johnson brothers. So we reached out to Chris. Uh, well, Alex did, and Chris said he's not interested. Um, but I think Corey said he was. And let's bring Ooh. Alex in real quick just to confirm that. Alex, how you doing? Yes, Mike? it's funny you bring that up. 
Corey just messaged me 20 minutes ago, and we'll probably get him on. You can interview him next week when he's driving to Florida for the first Elite Series event. So he'll be on. Okay. Okay. And then you got Fighter 2. I got Fighter already. Josh Bertrand. Yep. You said Josh okay. Bertrand. And then the Western guy I was working on was Justin Kerr. I haven't heard back from him yet. So if anybody out there knows him, let him know we want him on. He's right, really perfect. not paying you? Like you're doing this for free? <laughs> See, this right. is the way now, you got to Hold on, hold on. Where's no, no. Keep, he's done. Keep, no, whoa, right, whoa, anyway. whoa. Hey, <laughs> you got to bring it back. We got to get to the bottom of this, Travis. Oh, he's already working for Bass. I bring myself what? back. I'm kidding. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what's the deal <laughs> on that? Like, just kind of run through your work schedule real quick because I feel like you might be able to get more out of this. Oh, my God. Okay, I'll give you a quick 30-second breakdown if I look at it. I'm not getting paid monetarily. I'm getting paid with a lot of other things such as networking. Some They're really just invaluable things that people probably don't ordinarily look at that I value because eventually 10, 15 years down the road, I would like to make a living in the fishing industry. And I see this is just my first footsteps to getting that done. Um, like I've already said, Eric was giving cool. Travis a hard time about not sending me like a welcome package or something. But my welcome package was dming btc and getting in contact with him and trying to work out stuff with them and so i'm just trying to open doors for myself i don't care how much i get paid i don't care if it's five dollars an hour or zero dollars an hour i'm opening doors for myself and i'm making the most of every opportunity that comes in front of me. dude you did that hypnosis thing on him didn't you travis where you do well, that you thing with the <laughs> eyes like at three in the morning <laughs> I, I would personally like to, to sponsor his backdrop <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I would like to get him a, a CWW inshore shoulder backdrop. That's what he needs right there. All Dude. right. Uh, I, would, I would go for Grad 84 just gave nineteen ninety nine for for Alex. Travis, if you don't send him that 20 bucks, nice. We both out. I'm taking Alex and we're going to large mouth. All right. Next. Fine. That's fine. But <laughs> next, time you wanna, next time you want to make a it. statement. Next time you want to make a statement, send your shit to his Venmo, not me. So I got to take my time now to go s transfer money and all this bullshit. You're unbelievable, man. You're unbelievable. I think, I think <laughs> until, what is it, 11.02 there? I think any donations until 11.05 should go to the, to, to uh, the, the intern. intern. Hey, I think you should have a five-minute five minute donation. Listen, look, there it is. See, I, I started as an intern for Mark Jeffers man. for a year and a half, and I did the whole, oh, look at this experience, and you know what? You know, you're gaining valuable experience <laughs> carrying my camera cases and things like that, so I feel oh, you. Like, I, we're kindred spirits in that. Yeah, I mean, the way I look at it, too, is I have to prove my worth to him. If some random guy on the internet just messages him and says, hey, give me $300 a month and I'll do this for you, that's not, I don't think it would have really, really even opened up. I got to say, hey, here's what I can do. What's your Venmo? What's your Venmo? <laughs> Let me What's find it. Put it up on it, man. Yeah, put your nah, Venmo. No, we in don't. Man. You put sure? your Venmo. Let's dude, do it. Dude, you, you still owe him the 40. That's all there is to it. No, it's not forty, yeah. prickhead. It's thirty nine ninety nine, dickweed. And, and we you know Travis called you, you, you at all hours. Oh, wait, he hold on. Sleep. You were plus, deducted me. That is so these, sorry, man. These I can't these can't man, you got to get paid. Put your Venmo up. Hey, these mofo's from YouTube are going to take forty percent of these donations right now, Dave Shield. But we appreciate it. He's not a, worth a twenty <laughs> spot that falls out of your pocket. Come on, man. All right, this is going to go crazy here. Come on, we got Ben Milliken on here and Matt Pangrack. Let's go. Let's get some yeah, content. Come on, Brian. Jesus. Produce. Oh, what are All you right, doing Alex. right now? Alex, thanks for your input. We'll figure this yes. out tomorrow. The nightmare we created. There's another oh, 20. From you Jeff. have three minutes. Get your buddy in. To Let's go. I'm going to do it right now. If, Al if, if Alex wants any of this money tomorrow, he needs to put together. He needs to rewatch this. Do the math and tell me what I owe him. That's the only way it's going to work. Well, he's got to rewatch it to get the timestamp for uh, Matt. I'll gladly write him a check. But he's got to get it. I can't go through all this bullshit. He's going to have to do it himself, I think, is what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And write yourself a check. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wow. Anything ben, goes. next? Is that really Ben? Is he okay, frozen? Yeah. I think he's there. Yeah. Ben, are you there? Oh, I'm here. What'd you say, man? I, you cut out. Oh. For a second. <laughs> ben, where are you fishing next? Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm fishing in Iowa at about five in the morning. Wow. 
What's the what's the target? Is it, is it open water there? It, yeah, it's behind a lake. It's like a river thing. So walleye and smallmouth. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, all right. What, it's what, supposed what, to be twelve degrees when we get there. So, oh, it's gonna be wow. what are you Dude, fishing? What, twelve. He said twelve, Brian. Degrees. What are we doing? What kind of tactics? Crank baiting or blade? Uh, <laughs> little, little blade bait. Blade bait. Blade and bait. A, a, a fluke, a regular fluke, not a super fluke on a jig head, and just let that current just do 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 down the rocks and the current. Oh, wow. So you got, so current. you got some mm. current. You got some current. Current. Mm -hmm. Very How deep? Cool. Ben, you got 15, you got 20. Probably eight, eight to 20 feet, probably. Some eight of the 20. holes are a little bit deeper than that, but yeah, it's all it's all like uh, eddy uh, current scene fishing, stuff like that. What's your favorite Great. bleed bait these days? Mm, probably the Bensky. Yeah, but I love the Bensky. You change like, the hooks out at all, Ben? Yeah, I do. Okay. I don't know, man. I, if if I'm going for anything decent size, I switch them to Gamakatsu short shank round bends. What size? Uh, ooh, it depends on the size of the blade. Little tiny blade, I'll put out yeah. eights or tens even on it. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, but uh, that's why when when Frank was talking about fishing out in the grass the other day, um, he was saying eight or ten or twelve even, and that what? made me totally baby ones. Those are baby man. Yeah. Those those little round bins though they stick them, but yeah. um, you know, half ounce, three quarter ounce you can bump it up to six oh. fours twos. Sure, but yeah, the walleye are brain dead. So, we'll <laughs> what, but man, catching smallmouth in the waters in the thirties is not easy. Crazy. You stick with silver or gold, or do you go with any of the flavors of the Binskis that he's come out with recently? I like the little the silver and gold are always good, but the sure. you got one that the Gobi color is really good too. Nice. Have you seen the red one? It's like Kobe's a nice. gold chartreuse root beer type killer. Yeah, that root beer one is hot. I just, I just, uh, I took a shine of these. Brian, BTC, you're a Binsky guy. Have you thrown the red one? This one, BTC. Yeah, I have. And uh, like Upper Bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dry wit. That's yeah, no, favorite. I have. I have it. Uh, yeah, he has it done well. No, it's good. One. It's a good color, dude. Yeah, it's a fucking color. Stand for BTC, BTC has, oh, yeah. as far as the blade baiter goes, he has very good confidence. I've watched him fish a blade bait on my boat, and he doesn't mess around. Like, dude, we were in some brutal conditions, and you really stayed focused on that blade bait, and you put some good fish in the boat with it. So I was, I was freaking impressed, dude. I know I didn't say it in between the. Trying to fucking warm your hands up and shit. I mean, it was cold, but you put the smack down on those fish with Dude, it. That was that was brutal, Travis. That was the fucking greatest weekend. It really was, man. It was fantastic. Of course, my phone falling in the in the water. Travis, the the video. Do you think I can release that someday? Maybe. Uh, let's talk about that. We should talk about that. I I do want to say next week Wednesday. We're releasing the second half of our video with me, me and BTC up there uh, throwing shad wraps in super cold water. That's going to be on Wednesday. Uh, BTC, do you remember that point right before your, before we made the move where your cell phone dropped? We were off of that main lake point, and you were putting a smack down to those fish. Do you remember that? Real windy. Right before nope. we left to go back in shallow. Yeah, I mean, that main lake point. Uh, okay. That's the same... Yep. Uh, Matt and I went there two or three years ago and ran into Adrian Avina and we fished a, a tournament against him. We lost, by the way, but Matt and I actually fished on that same point where, where you were cracking on him like crazy. And it's just a funny story. We're all Is that where you're close, kind of close to the bank. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 time, what time of year, Travis? We were there in August. Matt and I were August. Okay. And we so we, we caught. Yeah, we didn't do that well. No, we got our ass kicked. Well, 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 what were they biting, dude? No, I want to hear. I want to hear details. We were drop, shot, we were drop shot. We're trying to drop shot with that two point eight Kai Tech in the current, and uh, I just we just winged it that day. He was throwing a spy bait, right? 
Matt? Yeah, in the backwater stuff. And oh. they caught a couple nice wall. I mean, we had a limit, but it was only like 12 pounds. And they had like 16. But there it were also tough- three people. There were three people in their boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, it was a, it was a, yeah, don't, don't let that example, like, you can go watch it. It's on Travis's YouTube. Yeah, it is. I suck that Over. day. Uh, it's kind of yeah, got a clickbaity like, title. It's like, I lose I'm holding a hundred dollar bill. Elite series pro to yeah. something. I lost to elite series pro a hundred dollars. Um, anyways, it is, it is a special place. Uh, Ben, you need to come up there sometime. Oh man, there's so, uh, so much up there. I'd love to go hit. Uh, yeah. I was so jealous when, when he was going up there, and it was funny the night before. Ike was giving BTC so much shit that he was going to uh-huh. go up there and get his fucking teeth kicked in and not get a bite. He's like, "There is no way you're going to catch anything. Maybe a walleye, but you are not going to catch shit in that cold." Uh, He's like, "It's cold in New Jersey, and you're going six hours north. You're not going to get a bite." It's and then different. Those start New Jersey in. Fish. But I've seen the video you're talking about, uh, that about the the punting situation, and this needs to become. Public. Uh, oh, what? so yeah, yeah. What we're talking about. So BTC, when he lost his phone, he he actually was trying to film uh, a a release of a smallmouth, I think. And so the phone falls off. Of, I don't know. What the phone falls in the freaking water, and you got a picture a guy. Is holding the you big small us from here. Okay. <laughs> nah, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take I'll take my own career. So yeah, dude. Yeah, and like listen. One of my favorite movies is Into the Wild. It's about this dude who uh, checks checks no. checks everything at the door and goes on this vacation. Shut the hell up. It's my fucking story, Travis. And he goes to Alaska, and um, and there's this one line where he's like, "Happiness not real unless shared," right? And it stuck with me. And, you know, here I am, fucking uh, the St. Lawrence dude. Worked my ass off all week. Ben, you were in town, right? I fished you on Tuesday or Wednesday, all the way up North Jersey, dude. Two hours up, two hours back, snow squall. By Friday, I was out on the Delaware River with you. And then and then we did a live show that night. Did that show. And then... Afterwards, I drove to Travis's, straight to his house, and then drove through the night up to the St. Lawrence. Now, listen, here's the deal, dude. Travis may or may not be a goddamn butt-sucking vampire. Listen, I don't fucking know, but I know I'm not going to go to goddamn sleep with a fucking potential vampire sleeping next to me, right driving next to me. I'm just not going to do it, dude. And no offense, but we're going to have we're going to fish. We're going to have a good time, but he might be a vampire. I'm not going to go. <laughs> So I did not sleep the whole fucking night. We drove all the way up, and I almost <laughs> fell asleep at one point. And then this motherfucker put this goddamn <laughs> Travis. What was that stupid music you put on, dude? Uh, it was some rap music fucking... by Tom McDonald. He's just trying to wake up everybody. Uh, uh, Tom McDonald started rapping at four thirty-five a.m. as I was just almost asleep. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Um, <laughs> we are, you, 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 you already know. We were Did north you, of Syracuse. You already know. So yeah, I do know. <laughs> so we get up there. In there for in the <laughs> right after so, he sucks your blood. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I got these two ports sticking out of my neck, and there's traps. <laughs> and he's <laughs> anyhow. We got up there. And um and uh, got on the water, dude. It was an amazing day. We fished. I was fucking energized. I loved it. But, you know, but where, what the fuck's the story even about? Your phone. The, your fish. The fish your that phone. you threw in the water. So the day two. All right, yeah. So at the end of Into the, day, the wild. <laughs> yeah. Into the wild. So, hey, so, man, here we are out there, freezing fucking cold, you know, dressed like the Michelin man, got gloves on. I, you know, just catching them nonstop. So I'm trying to get a little content, right? Got to get a little content. Like live, bash you, some slow mo releases. Look at this. Look at that. And here I am with a three pound smallmouth in my hand and my phone in the other hand and a glove and frozen stupid fingers. And I don't know what the hell happened, but my phone jumped like five feet out of my freaking hand 
in this goddamn lake, dude. And it was so disappointing. I was so mad. Could you oh. imagine? We yeah. need to see this so, clip at some point. It, 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 yeah. I mean, it wasn't a proper fish release, but he actually kind of spiraled the smallmouth. Like Tom yeah, Brady. Listen, he went into the water face first. He what did. matters? Nothing. If yeah. you, if you yeah. saw the video, though, I'm not going to let you do that, BTC. I won't. I won't put it up. I won't even. Even if you told me to, I won't do that. That's your call. I'm telling you right now. I've seen the video. I made. I know. Replay. There's. New, I know. The comes It is not a good video. Have to say. <laughs> it's a beautiful video, dude. It this was the man most violent the moment. fish release I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Besides no, banging a fish off of a boat or biting a shad's head off, Dude, he, uh. went into, uh, he went into water. I know, I know, Ben, you've seen it. It's beautiful. Tell me about it, Ben. Oh, he got down there quick. Ben, rate it, Ben. Oh, it was a uh, a nine point four at least on the dive. There you go. The most epic nine fish four. release ever. Matt, I'm sending it to you immediately. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mm. It is what it is, dude. You lost your phone. There it is. Everything in your life is flashing to the bottom. Ah! So that was that. What else we got? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a, a Gronkowski spike. Yeah, pretty it much. Was, it was. Come on, man. Don't leave me out here. Um, Somebody talk. I, I'll say this. <laughs> I'll say this. I felt bad. I felt terrible. I did not say a word. I it sucked. I didn't want to fish. I didn't want to catch another fish after that because I felt for you, BTC. Um it, it was tragic. I don't ever want to see that again. So you actually messaged me the other day. You found some type of apparatus to hold your phone, like one of them. Uh I don't know how you get those those some of the people that are a little, you know, challenged. Uh they gotta wear helmets and stuff. Or maybe uh, you know, you got one of them yeah. special devices, like uh, <laughs> a helper. It, yeah, he's it, wearing it, a helper. Yeah, I know. He's, he's, he's wearing a helmer. He's wearing a helmer. That's why I said that. Uh, you found a little. I uh, yeah, a floaty for the phone. It, oh, it might be out a here. floating case, right? Floating case. He ordered one. No. Oh my god, you're really gonna wear that? What the helmet? No. Um, no, no, the uh, fuck, the fucking yeah. bungee cord. I don't know where you're not going to use that. Dude. You're not going to use that. <laughs> a bungee cord. Fuck, I ain't, dude. No, so basically, it, it grabs a hold of your phone and it's a little bit lanyard on your hip. Everybody should check it out. Okay. What's your McCall dot com? Anyways, Ben, what are about. you going to uh, <laughs> not a good story? I love it. Ben, are you thinking about fishing the opens? What I'm sure you can still jump in this year. Yeah, yeah. This this year, I thought about it quite a bit, but not in the cards for this year. Had a pretty uh, big life event that we we just did uh, recently here that I'll, I'll probably share publicly soon. But um, I'm glad we didn't because of that. But I, I'm hoping maybe next year, 2022 or 2023. Just kind of waiting for the right time, I guess. Um, it's it's obviously it's not something you can plan on to just qualify for the elite series. I can fish it for my the rest of my life and never even get close to qualifying. But uh, I don't know if the elite series would really even be in the cards if I would qualify. So I kind of want to wait a little bit for keep fishing some local stuff. Um, kind of work my way up, go from there, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah, keep uh, taking people's money and. People getting pissed off that I keep fishing the local stuff around here. <laughs> yep. No, do you do pretty well at the local stuff? Like you, you, you dominate. We've had we did good last year. Yeah, we we won. I think nine out of twelve tournaments we fished last year, so it was a good wow. year. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Okay. But so there's there's people in the brass are like crazy. They're like, get this guy out of here. <laughs> They should do better then, right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know though. I I uh, I am hosting a tournament. I did a uh, a tournament um, two falls ago, the Slaunch Master Classic. We called it. We had two hundred boats. 
that one. Wow. Uh, Truman Lake in Missouri, and we're going to do that again into April, start of May this year. So we're, we're pumped about that. It's open. You guys should all be there. Truman Lake in Missouri. Wow. $1,000 first place, $100 entry fee. How much? First place, $10? 10? 10000 yep. $100. Dang, man. That's awesome. And when is it again? Uh, it's going to either be the last weekend in April or the first weekend in May. Wow. So it'll be a whack fest. Wow. 25, probably 20, 25 to 27 pounds of probably wind. Holy moly. Is it clear body of water? No. No. Dirty. Not. But it's it's the whole there's timber in the whole thing. It's a giant, it's like a sixty thousand acre lake. It's just creeks everywhere. Oh. Matt, have you fished it? Uh no, I know a bunch of people who have fished it though. It's similar, it's like kind of the same color of Lake of the Ozarks without a bunch of the docks, right? And standing yeah, timber. It's it's more stained and a, a way more timber, a lot of timber. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like if you take the docks out and put trees instead of docks. Yeah, about but it's not like your typical Ozark lake. Correct. It fishes a little bit different than the other Ozark lakes. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot more stained. But it's been it's come on really strong in the last couple of years. So very cool. That's fun, man. Is that a tournament you put on, Ben? Yes, sir. Put it together. Oh. Two Slaunch months. Master. What do you call it? The Slaunch Master. What? Slaunch, Slaunch Master. Master Classic. I love it. <laughs> you yeah, man. Yeah, we were gonna, we were planning on doing a couple a year, but then COVID happened last year and ah. got canceled in the spring, and then everything in the fall got booked up super tight right away, and sure. we just kept yep. pushing back. So, yeah, we're excited. Man, that's outstanding. Somebody asked, "Is it fish like Grand Lake?" It is kind of like Grand Lake. Um, okay, it's not Grand Fish is more like the like the Ozark Lakes than Truman, I would say. Right. Yeah, I haven't spent a ton of time on Grand, a handful of days, but um, yeah, Truman. There's so much timber in Truman. Okay. Mm -hmm. Incredible. What's your favorite lake? Is that your favorite lake to fish? Oh no, man! I I we uh, we go down to Texas three or four or five times every winter, uh, and so oh. we get there's some good lakes down there. What's your top lake down there, man? Can't tell you. It's a secret. Ah, is it that one that I've been oh. hearing about? I can't remember. Somebody was talking about we're a lake. Going, we're going there in two, three weeks. Zone okay, there. If that helps at all. Yeah, I, 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 I can't remember the name, but I remember it being mentioned potentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got. You. All right. Sure. So, other than Joe that Canyon. lake, what's sure. your yeah, Choke Canyon? What's your favorite lake other than Choke Canyon? Around here, um, I like Truman <laughs> a lot. Um, what about Texas? Couple lakes and oh, in Texas, yeah, yeah, in Texas, like in the winter when you go down. I'm uh, curious, they're, like they're, other than choke. Um, Fayette County Lake's really good. That's a oh, wow. lake way down south. Um, I, I fished that one with Sean yeah. Hurt. Fayette Lake, that's a power plant one. Yep, yeah, I've only been there a few times. Huh. That oh, was God. good, ridiculous. That was um, stupid. Yeah, there, I mean, uh, Welsh Lake is pretty good, pretty solid lake. You're not going to catch anything over seven or eight pounds, but. Great Lake. There's a couple other little ones I I've been told about that I can't really talk about, but fair enough. Yep, G giant what? fish. Hey Matt, have you followed Josh Jones fishing at all? Yeah, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he's done some pretty crazy shit in your home state there. I, he has. I talked to him quite a bit. I know he's not uh -huh. uh, thought of extremely highly by a lot of the elitists of the tournament fishing profession but oh. i do not personally know him so i yeah, yeah. he catches a lot of big fish he also refers to himself as the nick saban of crappie fishing and that he only targets the biggest fish in the state and doesn't like other people ever getting within six miles of him so true oh it's true. hey uh real quick since since we have been on i i love to ask you this question <laughs> but wait, well, um, yes he is he's he caught a fifth, like a fifty pound bag out of Oklahoma a couple weeks ago. Yeah, whoa, craziness. His goal this year is to catch eight hundred or four hundred over eight pounds. Yeah, he sends every single fucking one of them to me, but then I asked to come down there. He said oh, I'll booked up with guide trips, so he oh, charges a thousand dollars a day. Oh wow, yeah, I would too because he's For catching crappie? multiple uh, eight, pounders every big day. Crappie. Big crappie for bass. He's got a it. Yeah, it's not. I mean, they're, they're, for they're pub okay. They're public. They're public lakes. But what you have to understand is in Oklahoma, and and it's like it maybe nowhere else. There's a a several hundred 
40 to 150, 200 acre public lakes. Wow. And yeah. there's a handful of guys who have spent the time to go to all of them and figure out what lives in them. And there's a handful that there's some crazy stuff. Oh, they that figured out a 40 acre lake? Yeah, but it, it's but there's also a skill there because I mean you can go to thirty of these things and never get bit. And I mean, dude, when you want to <laughs> fish, when you want to fish, you want to go catch fish. fish here. Yeah. But I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah, but, I mean, okay. Here's the thing. I'll say. Right, so he, he's clearly he's not well liked or well thought of by a lot of people in the industry. Maybe down there. Uh, but <laughs> what he's doing is unprecedented in the country right now. I would say he's catching. He sent me a 12 and a half pounder yesterday. He sent me, um, Holy like, shit. Day, they caught like five between eight and 11 pounds in a day. Like, he's he's catching so many big fish with pan optics on an Alabama rig, individual fish. That's uh, it's ridiculous. No one else is catching fish. I, like he is. I totally agree. I will, I will it's totally crazy. 100%. He is catching the most tough. and biggest fish. And I'll just, we'll wrap it up and say he may not be doing it in the most graceful manner. Right, right. <laughs> Why? Hold on. You, what would you mean? Whoa. Uh, he just, he just, he's just one of those dudes who ruffles That's feathers. The juice. That's you're either in the Josh for. Jones camp or you're not in the Josh you gotta Jones. Go to camp. Is, he, is he fishing? <laughs> is that a fair, fair statement? Ben? I, I, don't, I, I, I haven't been on a boat with him and fished with him, but now, I haven't either. But like oh, I said, you're either in the camp or you're not. There's exactly two exactly. sides at the crazy yep. rivalry that goes beyond crappie and company and business and tournaments. Does he and fish tournaments? He, he fish has fished some. Yeah. He, if he you were making a thousand dollars a day, would you fish tournaments? Hell if no. I'm catching no, that kind of weight, sure, well, certainly. Well, big I'm. tournaments, but I mean, right? It'd have to be worth your while. He That's said, like well, I mean, he had a top a 10 in a 250-boat Nichols fishing by himself. How about Was that? he the guy that had 50 pounds yes. on the A-rig? Yes. So, yeah. I saw How about that? That, that little it's prick. Yep. Yeah, that but that little. was fucking Tuesday when all the men were working. Okay? You hear me? <laughs> it was a Tuesday, and men were working. Hey, Fuck listen. Said, you don't know him personally. Listen, not listen, taking anything away. Listen, listen, Antifa, just because you don't get to go out and oh. work, you know. You got to wear your helmet and your freaking hoodie around. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. All right. All right serious question. Uh, Let's wait, move on. Go ahead, Eric. Go ahead. Ben, Ben, people have been asking nonstop on this stream. Your favorite, if you could only pick one, this is a crazy question. Six cents color crankbait. <laughs> what would it be? That's what they want to know. I just had one. The other uh, day. Black well, and white. It depends on the season. Of course. All right. If you want to okay, give them so, more than one, that'd be great. We'd love to hear that. One, oh, one big it. Say it again. It's going to be coming out in the pre-spawn here that is just like a staple for me. Everywhere I've traveled, I, I throw it. It's the flat 75 in the color brown eyes special. It's like yeah. a super – the color – the Casey owner formulated the color after the crawdad color of the uh, – Oh, you know, Rapala's crawdad color and the the shad wrap um, yep. doesn't have the scales and stuff, but it's like that super mellow orange uh, chartreuse. Yep, right there. And yeah. um, that you, flat you don't, five runs four to six feet deep. Don't show that one. Rip wrap, chunky rock. It's it's the best fun crankbait I've ever thrown. I've had I've caught so many big fish on that one. And um, it's like something I don't even care to give away anymore because I'll catch them anyway in mu in stained right. muddy water. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's just killer. It's the best color. color. It's so, and it's five – the bait weighs five-eighths of an ounce. So you, you can bomb it. You throw a lot of water with it. You can worm it through the rocks. It slow floats. It's a very slow floating bait. Changing the hooks will make it, make it almost suspend. So it, it's just it's just such a killer bait. Um, hey, there you go, guys. Damn, thank hey, you. Hey, Helmet Head, by the way, uh, you know, John's tuning in here. He he actually ha he's a hard working man, he has off Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay, John, who? John, yeah, he's got off Tuesdays and Wednesdays, man. John, who? Mm -hmm. John Henning. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, hey, I'm Nate. Tom's back. Shout out Tommy. 
Who's who's rifling those rattle traps in the Yo, background? Let's everybody. That's that's <laughs> hey, fucking Eric. Let's everybody do this again. Everybody grab rattle traps. No, no, no. I got a serious question. I, I need to get this real quick because Ben's probably going to have the answer for me. Ben, so back in July, okay, I feel so bad. Back in July, somebody, who oh, I don't know who, messaged me and said, hey, we'd love to have you check out these sunglasses. Can you do that? And so I said, sure, send me a pair. They sent me a pair. Well, first of all, they told me the company, Waterland. They sent me the box. Then they said, pick out the frame that you like the most. I picked out this frame that's got your name in the middle, okay? It says, it says Milliken right there. Now listen. So I got them. I love them. I wear Costas, but I, I tried these on, and they were just as good as far as quality. I do a lot of sight fishing. Hear me out where I'm going with this. I used them. I cannot find the email to get back to whoever sent me them to thank them. Nothing. And here we are in January, and I have no way to tell you guys they were great glasses. Uh, where do we go from here? That's all. Dude, that's awesome. I, that's I don't know. Yeah. Waterland's our baby, man. Me and Casey, yeah. owner Six Sense, and his brother Garrett. Um, we started the company, launched them in June. We, dude, we're. I'm so excited to hear you say that. We spent mm -hmm. three years working on the right lenses and frames for that. Wow. Um, but you, I mean, you're you're on board. Consider yourself on board. I'm, <laughs> I'm owner I, of the company. I, I, uh, uh, ben, sure ben, I just want to say that I experienced that same shit as Travis did, and I also lost the email. But I have all those great things that Travis just had to say. So consider me on the team too. Well, well, consider this. I, that, Brian, I had the same experience. Just and Matt, 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 did you have those that experience? No, but I, they need to make some goggles for you. <laughs> Come on, that is weird. Uh, Dude, that's no, awesome. I didn't yeah, even no, realize. No, that I, I just want, I do want to say this for real. Um, as far as so, so let's be honest. Here, I like to be straight up. Costa does have some cool frames and stuff that look cool when you're driving, right? Uh, for but for fishing, uh, and I'll the lens here is the it's green mirror. It's a little bit so guys that use the Costas right now because I've I use Costas quite a bit. I have six different pairs: green, copper, sunrise, all that. Um. I asked for green because I like green for, for the type of shallow water fishing I do on the Great Lakes. That clear water, uh, that green lens is the best. This is a little bit brighter. So when it's partly cloudy, it's amazing as well. Not only when it's sunny, but it really brightens things up for me. And I, I noticed, because I use the same quite a bit. In fact, that whole month I was using these glasses, I was going back and forth from day to day to really test it because I really, when I, when I talk to people about which glasses and what products I recommend, I want to make sure I give them, you know, what, what really works for me. And I found that I could, I oftentimes found myself wearing these more and felt like I could see those fish better with these over the Costas, which are two to three times more expensive than these sunglasses. Yeah, that's dude, which that's I thought was cool. Weird. I get the question all the time in my Instagrams. Hey, what sunglasses do you wear? And I hate telling people to go drop 350, you know, bucks on a pair of glass lenses from Costas when something like this. And I'll be honest, though, I've tried other, I tried those floating sunglasses. You know, people send me shit all the time. Oh, there it goes. Um, there it goes that Costa deal. And it, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, I'm listening. I'm listening to so what Waterland, said because he's a vampire, good. so he has it's to wear sunglasses when it's like <laughs> it's a reliable pair. It's those would be perfect so in the car. Let me pour a little out for that coast yeah. deal, Trav. All right, Ben. <laughs> You're going crazy on these sunglasses. Yeah. They, they said, "Is there a special Waterland discount just for tonight's stream?" Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, I always have my my MF10 promo code. Well, there you go. Put it, put it in the comments, man. People would yeah. like to hear. Dude, that's that's so awesome. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate yeah. that, man. We've experienced yep. the same thing. When we started mm -hmm. the company, we kind of saw a, a hole in the industry where 
um, we, we kind of found out once we looked into it, we, we were, we were all three super serious fishermen, spent a ton of time on the water and the, the sunglasses industry was getting, you know, it's out of hand with 250, $300. You got to drop to go get a good pair of sunglasses, a good reliable pair. And we kind of found out, um, through the grapevine, what, what the cost on those sunglasses actually was. And we yeah. saw how much everything was driven up just by marketing costs and, and dealer costs and everything like that. And so we, we decided we're going to start a sunglasses brand and it took us a really, really long time to get all the right materials, but we wanted to have the best pair of sunglasses at the best price, the best customer service, the best marketing, the best website, buy directly off there uh, and, and get them and, and be able to replace them if something goes wrong with them. Because that's another thing, you know, you, you crack those glass lenses, it's 130, 40 bucks to, to get them replaced. Oh, yeah. it is. Uh, even the polycarbonates are a hundred bucks to get replaced. Um, so, so we wanted to make them better and we we, we launched in June, man, with four different frame designs, three different lens designs, and the feedback was phenomenal. And then here in 2021, we got two giant things coming. Um, we have a polycarbonate lens is what we launched with. Um, but we have prescription lenses now, so you can actually get, get into the waterland customer service or that was the biggest thing. People hitting us up about prescription. I didn't realize how big of a a deal that is i i've never worn glasses myself so i guess maybe we, we neglected that a little bit but um thousands and thousands of people wanting prescription sunglasses and we have that available now and we're getting into a glass lens that we're uh, we're finally finishing up prototyping and it is a premium japanese glass lens that we're super excited about hopefully be able to offer that uh again cheaper than any glass lens on the market Man. Hey Ben, I've got a, a, a you know some some guys are asking for a wider lens. I don't yep. know what the millimeter on your standard lens. I'm sure it's on the website, but are you thinking about um, different size frames for the the big fat heads that you know people are get a fat head? Yeah, hundred percent, man. And Travis actually has those. Um, okay, great. The Melican ones are are the the biggest ones we have. Um, okay, I, they were they're the most comfortable pair for me, but they're actually kind of pretty universal it's hard to hard to explain um but i wear si size seven five eights fitted hat so i got a big dome and got it they fit me perfect that's that's the one to get if you got a big head the millican okay cool man. Well, yeah. I, I have a i have a more a narrower face but what i like about these is they seem to wrap around i don't get too much yeah. penetration you know sunlight yeah. in from uh -huh. the side because Definitely. as they BTC, when I what what key these buzzwords you you laugh at? What was it? Penetration. <laughs> uh, what we're talking about? Tube, <laughs> slender, flavor. Three and a half inch tube. Yeah. Double drip. Three and a half times oh, three, God. bro. Uh, so no. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Ben, listen to me. I'm fucking old, dude. See these fucking. Things? Oh, are you are you gonna bring up the them. aviators, bro? Him. BTC sunglasses are aviators. Nah, worse than that, dude. Freaking aviators, dude. What? 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 All right, hold on, dude. What, what, fuck what, the, fuck the readers. When did the aviators become a problem? I just need to know. I'm Matt, well, Ben. You guys are young. For though. one, if you're a, if you're a girl, if you're a, if you're a girl that wears aviators, I'm totally not even. You're not attracted at all to you. Done. Oh, Matt's going to get his. You pussy. Dude. So. How do we go about ordering these things if you got to have a prescription? Yeah, man. So go to Waterland Co. Waterlandco.com and uh, go to the customer service. Read an email and say that you get some prescription sunglasses, and we get it figured out that way. And I don't. I honestly, I don't know the pricing <laughs> sunglasses are generally, but I'm I'm told that they're they're very competitive. I think two two hundred ninety nine dollars for prescription sunglasses or, or something in that ballpark, which is cheaper than most. That's ballpark. about half. That's about half price. Yeah, a lot of people have prescription um, um, and, and insurance too. On top of that, so cool, mm. cool, man. Good well, job. I, I don't know if I'm no, checking that out. out. I can't. I can't see shit without readers. BTC, don't oh. wear those. Though. Don't wear Matt, that with a vest. Got my back. I've been driving blind for about four years now, so it's about, it, time. It's about yeah. time to get a pair of glasses. <laughs> Matt, you with me, dude? Or, or you Musky Hunter, I, I have not I used thing. I have not used the so. silver lenses before. These are the green lens. It's the only pair I've used from them. So I can't vouch for it. I'm just telling you the conditions that I experienced when you have a little bit of sun or partly sunny, uh, these glasses are gonna do you well. And I do I 
I have to have sunglasses when I'm fishing, especially up on the Great Lakes. So yeah, right. Tom Pavlot says, if you're a state trooper, aviators are cool. <laughs> ben, sight I'm fishing in say, Florida. Tom, what what do I, I need? Got some emotions right now. I'm not gonna Green express mirror. Them. Green mirror. Yeah, green mirror is our highest contrast lens. Um, uh, it's made for sight fishing. It, it's so saturated and high contrast that it's almost not very good for driving on the road. Um, kind of strains your eyes. It's kind of it's a weird concept, but yes, for looking through water and sight fishing, green mirror all the way. Would that compare to the you're sunrise exactly in Costa? Well, no, hold on. Let me answer that. No. Let me say something real quick, Ben. You're absolutely right. I felt overwhelmed driving in my car yeah, it's, with it's those weird. on. I, yep. I'm so glad you said that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like yeah. emotionally or? <laughs> A little bit of both. Might have been yeah. the music I was playing at the time. But listen, Scooter, your question, the sunrise lens. Here's the question <laughs> for you, Ben. I love that sunrise lens, that early morning, that yeah. overcast day when you need – I still need to see in the water if it's dark out, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, love to have you come out with something like that. You know, Costa does have that sunrise lens, which is great for low light conditions. Um, even rain, I'm wearing sunglasses yeah, just because too. it's important not only to protect your eyes from other anglers and baits, but you, you still can get a glimpse of that bottom structure when you're in crystal clear water, even though it might be, 6 30 in the morning the sun's just coming up and there's a bunch of cloud cover <laughs> is well, there any fucking it vampire helps. it helps is there, any, is there, is there, is there any, <laughs> anything <laughs> on the work dark black sunglasses tonight yeah <laughs> is, is there anything on the work possibly coming out for that because that yeah. is a big deal <laughs> so like i said we're a startup we, we started in june um we're very very familiar with the sunrise coastal lands and other lenses on the market and uh in the the glass lenses we're, we're prototyping seven or eight different types of lenses the the sunglasses and, and we're, we're obviously looking at super low light lenses like that as well but um man the sunglass industry is crazy we didn't realize how much went into it but there's so many patents on wavelengths of what goes into which lens on the market it's terrifying because you could put you could be told by someone in japan that's that's manufacturing the lens that this patent isn't taken and then you could put it on the market and then all of a sudden you could get a cease and desist from Costa or Maui Jim or a giant company because the, the certain nanometer spectrum of the, the lens was so minute and, and you didn't know differences in it. It's crazy, man. So we, we're, we're, we're developing stuff like crazy. We're making as many frames and lenses as we can come out with, but um, we're, we're taking our time to do our due diligence. To do everything. It's, uh, it's the wild west out there. <laughs> and I have no, I have no um, loyalty to Costa. By the way, guys, they do make a great sunglass. I didn't know any better. I always thought spending two hundred fifty bucks on on those lenses was the only way to go. So I literally have six pairs. But Ben, you're right. I've probably spent in the last three years four or five hundred bucks on repairs. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, you send that in. Oh, I got, gonna, I got gonna six you a pill. right now that are trash in my truck. Yeah, before they yeah, send that yeah, back to you, me. they send an email asking for a credit card for 150 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> it's uh, it's it it's your balls for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. BTC, what do you got going on, man? What are you snacking on? Oh. Hey, you crushing oh. some peppers, BTC? Got some, got some stuffed peppers. Oh my god. Pitos. Oh no, you just got a little snack bag. You're right. You're right. Hold on. Hang tight, Matt. What are you thinking? By the way, listen, Matt. I, Matt, you're fishing the opens this year. We haven't even talked about that. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Come on, Matt. What do you want to know about it? I don't know. It's are a you lot of money. Are you get ready. What do you? Come what's on. your? Yeah. Yeah. How I did my. It? It's. How do you 30, do it? Thirty-six grand. I got a question, Matt. Jeffries pays you a lot of money to be on BTL, apparently. He totally does, man. No. Matt, Matt, got a question a for you. Money. Yes. Since your goal is to make it to the I, elite, I've seen it. how are you going to change your fishing style to help accomplish that goal? I, I'm really not. I've never been All a right. swing. I've never been a swing guy. When I fished yeah. the coasts, I was trying to make the Costa Championship. This past okay. year in the Opens, I was trying to make the Elite Series. When I fished the Bass Nation stuff, I'm trying to make the state team. And then you have the one event that you go for it. I'm a I'm a lose the lose the battle, win the war type of guy. The way I fish, 
So it's a lot easier that way. Steady yeah. state, get five alive in the well. Yeah. I mean, I do a lot of research and studying on exactly what it takes and historically. And man, if you can go across the country and catch 11 to 12 pounds a day, you'd be shocked at how well that, like everyone wants to go look at that, that, that BFL on Rayburn the other week and be like, oh, 41, 10, won it. But it, also, it was like 14 pounds for a top 10. And there's wow. like 200 some boats in it. I mean, right. you, you can nickel and dime your way to death. And that's the way I look at it. It's just, it's a lot easier. I mean, there's, it's, it's a known fact. There's a lot more 11 to 12 pound limits out there than there are 16 to 25 pound limits. That's crazy. And, and then you get to a championship event and then you roll the dice, but you're there. You're, you're in, you're in the game. You know what I mean? You're not in the side, you're not in the stand. So I'd rather be in the game. So, so you're just going to do your thing, man. You're going to flip. That's a, that's a strength, right? Yeah. It's a lot, a lot of different weird, you know, you're going mean, to drop. I, you're going to, what are your top five tools that you use to employ to do your 11 to 12 a day to, to get you to the elites? I mean, um, that, are universal, um, that you always find your go-tos. A, a little crankbait, whether it's a little cliff pace slim. Okay. That's like, oh, ooh, that's probably the, num probably the number one there with the foil pattern. That thing will freaking get bit little 1.0 or 0.5, a wacky worm. Wow. Uh, and a drop shot. Right on. A lot of spitted stuff. And then, you know, it, it just depends on the lake. Like you get, I mean, I'm sure. looking at it here. Obviously in Florida, I'll, I'll have some big sticks out and stuff. Sure. But I'm not going to be afraid to throw a spinning rod anywhere we go. Right on, man. I Would mean, you? I know got a lot of guys who make it. I mean, the spinning rod is, like I said, I'm looking for two and a half pound fish. It's with this gear, with a, with a full field, you It'll better have a spinning rod out. Yeah. On all I mean, areas. like Ray Rayburn the past year. I mean, it, it, I got I got thirty eight. They paid the top forty. I went fifteen and twelve, and I got it's, paid. It's gonna get and that's great. not that great for Rayburn. That's yeah, every lake is gonna get murdered. What, mm -hmm. And that's you, you ask people all the time. You know, the tournament guys you guys have on the podcast, what your strengths are, and everyone seems to always say, you know, I'm a power fisherman. I'm good at drop shot. I'm, a, I'm more of a nor up north finesse type guy. When I listen to you describe how you fish tournaments, it's almost like your strength is that you're just a really scrappy fisherman, I guess would be the best way to describe it. You're, you're going to take what's given to you, and if it's – you're going to go get bit, and, and if it's enough to get a check, it's enough to get a check. And that's – I mean, that's 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 the name of the game in the tournaments. That's, yeah. That's, that's exactly what you're trying to do. I love it, man. Yeah, I like to be able to say I'm one bite away from being where I need to be. Like, I mean, and if that could be 14 inch or 14 inch or 14 inch or 14 inch, or now I'm a four pounder away from getting paid. Yeah. But like, sure. I just try because, dude, I get so overwhelmed. So, so do you yeah, like pick try a, to, do you pick a small area do you, and and just fish the heck out of it, or or do you like do a whole lot of moving? Uh, I I try to pick a area like a couple mile area and get comfortable right with. yeah because i don't uh -huh. really care what else is out there man a creek catch arm, right? you're, yeah you're like you're like picking a creek arm and like fishing yeah, the whole thing there's like yeah. five fish in every creek arm especially when you go to like a good lake mm -hmm. like if oh, i yeah, know what's 30 everywhere. miles away like if i know yeah. what's there i'll go there even though i don't right. need to but if i right. don't know what's 30 miles away i won't go there right i got you so that's how you do it you, you're you're picking you a productive area and staying there and yeah. milking it out, no matter what. Yeah. And it doesn't always work. I mean, you pick a shitty area, you're kind of screwed, which happens. <laughs> but, but I mean, you just do your homework and try to put. That's where it helps to be, you know, work with work with other guys. I'll say this: you're not going to pick an area that doesn't have a bridge, doesn't have some riprap, and doesn't have some marinas or some ramps. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. right. I, I missed the ramps. Sorry, I, I knew high percentage it, areas. It might right. So could Unless it's a natural lake. I mean, it's it kind of is rough. So, like, Florida is a little different. That's why I'm a little uh, nervous going down there, like the Harris chain. But, I mean, you can take BMR squared and maybe turn that into uh, canals yeah. and uh, yeah. locks. And, you know, are you going to have a speed worm? Are you going to have a speed worm in your hand the whole time? I'm just going to have everything that's soft plastic and June bug colored. You, you got any crankbaits that are June bug colored? but perhaps you'd like the dt4 june bug 
Or maybe you'd like the Excalibur out of production 1.5. No, and then I can walk it. over there and get you one more. But wait till TK comes on. You'll see a June bug that will blow your mind, man. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that dude has the juice. Oh, we're working on something together. It's a little collab. I'm so stoked about it, man. But literally, I've never seen one. I've never seen a June bug crankbait. And, and that's what kind of inspired me was those tannic colored lakes. June bug is such an effective worm color. Why doesn't it? Now you can. It's here. It's coming. Uh, no, I, I like the idea. People need to get access to those June bug crankbaits. I like your little Bass Lab logo you got. You guys can buy the stickers. Mm -hmm. Right here. Uh, you, Ben, we can get your sunglasses. Here's the problem. Because I right. decided to open my mouth and invite Alex on, everybody's donating all their money that they were going to give to us, <laughs> to Alex, tonight. So we're us. screwed. So, Wait a minute, us, you know, us. Who's the us? It's you. You, know, these you, people you don't pay the guy. Dude, you these owe me burn, from all the They burned hey, all Alex. their money already. So hey, I ain't going to talk about my one-on-ones. I'm not going to talk about my buffs tonight because you guys hey, already Alex. shot your load. Time out, time out. Alex, Go Alex, on. I'll pay you 50% of whatever people have sent to me over the years on the streams, and I've never seen a dime. <laughs> never. If you want to go back and watch them, I'll give you half the money. Fuck it. You can have the whole, you can have it all. Have it all. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I'll slice you it for you. You don't know, Alex. I'm going to get a very oh, angry call. Hey, 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 hey. First of all, does anyone know what happened to BTC? And by the way, guys, we're almost yeah. well. We're over. We're we're hitting the three and a half hour period. Uh, it will not offend me, Matt, Ben, Scooter, if you guys got to run. Okay, um, I you know if you have to leave, just let me know. Ain't a, it's fine. Uh, don't stay here because we're all, you know. What I mean, I, I I'm just saying you're welcome to go whenever you want. What, what happened to Brian? Is he dead? I, there he is. He's just walking around the background. There you go. <laughs> How do you change? That? Fucking here, eh? <laughs> Fucking Travis put me in the goddamn waiting room. What? I did not do it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't? Oh, my. Now that's a knife. Did you like that green room, by the way? I set that up for all the guests. That's very cool. No, do you know, who, stupid. Do you know who he is? I do. <laughs> the hospital live on camera. That's crazy. BTC be very cool. Is that real? That is real. That is a real life. That must have come from one of his Australian friends. This is making me nervous. <laughs> me too, man. BTC oh. down. No. Hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is making me Ow. nervous, Brian. What? Are we bringing out the G-Crack again? Bit. You got a shotgun, two beers no, at a time. Dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... That's going to be a slate band-aid. What's he doing, guys? Can you see it? Measuring board. Good yeah. Lord. Bumping the... Bumpin the... 10-inch blade. Yep. Ten inch. Wow. There it is. Wow. Put, that, put that knife down. Now that's a knife. Hey, by <laughs> the way, that pretty Carl. Does he yeah, own a pig farm? Yeah, <laughs> Carl, Carl Jackson owns a pig farm. Hey, hey you'll, 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 you'll hear me a fucking knife. Who uh who likes who who's seen the movie Snatch on this stream right here of the guests? Me and Scooter. No and did you say yes? Yeah. Yeah. Banger? Which, wait, what's it about? Snatch. Brad Pitt. He cut himself. He has cut himself. It's a guy. Oh, my God. It's a guy, Richie. <laughs> Phil. Travis, have I you seen don't Snatch? think I've seen it. No, no. BTC, have you seen Snatch with Brad Pitt? Probably. He's a pike. He yeah, they, yeah talk, they talk a bunch of the fucking that guttural English shit. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, I've yeah. seen that movie. Well, they up, fight all the Milliken, Milliken, yeah. Milliken, Milliken could talk that shit. I've heard him. Go ahead, Ben. What are Jamie you Newton. About? By the way, Jamie Newton you know just that, said that, that 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 jackknife that knife is illegal in twenty states. Is that true? A, a United States citizen can't have a blade that's ten inches long. I mean, just, I want can't confirmation. Hide it. I want confirmation. At the end of the day, who gives a fuck about legal? Anybody? That's right. 
Not me. Hey, speaking of Brian, isn't it legal there January 1st this year? To what? Smoke weed Probably. every day. <laughs> Probably. I'm, I'm not, not, I, dude, I have I have no cable television. I'm so disconnected nice. from it. I get my news. I get my news from you people, man. Like nice. my buddy Dave, Travis. Well, Ross, I'll help you out. Yeah, tomorrow we'll talk. I'll get you set up with what's really going on out there. Dude, I I'm, haven't had I'm, one of those I'm calls out. for a couple I'm weeks. Out. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Go, I yeah, took all my money out of the stock market. Black tails and gold bars Frankie because full of bang. Travis. Bitcoin. That's Bitcoin. Right. That's the next big thing. <laughs> I've got that. Yeah, my buddy John McGraw. Same shit. Same I, I take my Travis, remember that time you didn't sleep for three weeks and you, you invested in uh, Bitcoin? Yeah. And all, uh, yeah, blockchain technology. Yeah. How'd that work out? That's the stuff right there, Brian. Yeah. What is that? What'd you just eat, Brohim? Jalapeno. Come on, Ben. Mm. Mm. That is a, I still yeah. have Peppers. cans in the I still have Peppers. cans in the pantry from the last conversation I had with you before all this stuff went down. <laughs> so it's a I went pepper. to the grocery store and the girlfriend was like, What are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. But Travis said I need to get gold and canned foods. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still in there. Well, I've got so many kids at Rotel. I don't want to say anything. You have made predictions for two years straight on the screen. And every single one has been wrong. No, it hasn't. It never happened. 100%. The internet was supposed to stop working like nine days ago. Solar Flare, version two. Oh, yeah. Dude, you know it's true. And he's still, he's got a new date now. What's the new date? March 4th. Yeah, Travis, I read that article, man. There is no... That's when the Open starts. What's going to happen March 4th? <laughs> You'll have a new president. Oh, my God, dude. What is oh, hey, you asked, dickweed, okay? You said you weren't going to bring it up. You said I can't talk about it. But since you brought it up, I'm going to say it. Stop. Just stop. It's okay. It's That's okay. okay. You've made your prediction publicly. We'll go back. Mark it 326 and 42... Well, 30 seconds. He made the prediction. And now we can put it to rest if that one's wrong, too. Oh, my God. No, I, already, my I already put to rest. You guys are the one that dig it up and peel the emotion. It's like I'm an onion, and you just peel and peel, and, and then finally it just <laughs> all comes out, man. And we're all crying. <laughs> Bunch of tears. Uh, no, Ben. You send me to some YouTube live stream, and the guy's the got chicken. like a seven-hour oh, manifesto. Oh, he got a chicken. I got, I got a leg lamp. I'm like three hours into it, and I didn't think I'd make it 10 minutes. And about <laughs> at, at hour three, when I start thinking, oh, my God, this is actually going to happen, that's when I realize it is time to turn it off. And there's still four more hours of it. <laughs> hey, is, Scooter, Scooter, do you have that leg lamp? Heck yeah, man. It's, it's a major award. Look, Scooter got a major award lamp. It's a major award, baby. I, mean, I love it, yeah, man. Yeah, this is it. This is right the there. part of the show when everybody grabs something I mean, crazy and you you need, starts out. making weird noises. <laughs> I mean, anything goes right now. <laughs> skunk. Oh. Is that a weasel or a skunk? That's it's, a skunk, a it's a Turkish. It's a Turkish weasel. Why do you have that? That's a real skunk pelt right there. But oh, for shit. what? Oh, it uh, is. Well, actually, this week I hung this above my buddy's bed because he hadn't had oh. a girlfriend in a while, and then he actually had to move houses, so he gave me the skunk pelt back last night because he got a girlfriend <laughs> last week. So <laughs> that thing stayed above his bed for a year. Fred, well, be careful. Eric will try to drop shot with it. <laughs> I tried to carry this in the boat. <laughs> I thought when you zeroed, if you could hang the skunk flag off of your light post that would be off your power pole, that might be kind of a thing. And then I realized that's probably something you don't really want to yeah. advertise. Yeah. I paid paid fifteen dollars for that skunk pelt. <laughs> well, got your buddy a girlfriend at least. It was yeah. it was poached a poached skunk pelt, dude. We can I make feel like Scooter Lily may have skinned a few skunks at his death. <laughs> Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, it's not. I don't know if I'd call them skunks, but I no. <laughs> but but got, I just see like she was you a sound nice like, lady. Like, a, like a trapper, like a like a trapper yeah, and an outdoor guy. You do a little hunting too down there, don't you? In them Carolinas. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
Coon hunting. <laughs> no, we don't do no coon hunting. It's all it's all whitetail hunting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, David Dudley yeah. hunts raccoons. We had him on a show one time, and he got stuck in a fence while he was while his dogs were tracking a raccoon. What? I, yeah. I, I have to. I've been a part of that. I've done a little coon hunt myself too. <laughs> that's a that's a cold night. That is a cold night. Apparently, it is a, it is a cold night. And you ever been on a, one of them cougar hunts? Travis, you're out on this one. Uh, like uh, an actual cougar hunt, like where they no. bay them up the tree and stuff? Oh, no. Nah. No, but I know some guys. I know the guides. I know some guys that do it. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I don't know I what BTC. Go on what is BTC doing over there? I'm out. He's just walking around. He's out. He's out. Figure All right, out. guys, listen. Hey. This is a good segment into, uh, I guess, calling it a night. I appreciate everybody hanging out with us. We still yeah, got a hell of a crowd. But when BTC gets restless, you know what it means. It's a wrap. It's a wrap, everybody. Thanks That's for right. you. Thanks for you. Thanks for having me. Shut the hell up. I'm going to close this shit up. Do it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking Ben Milliken, dude. He's got to release every goddamn day on Facebook. <laughs> Almost every day on YouTube. Savagery, dude. Savagery. Respect, my man. Respect. Ben's putting the work in. My man, Travis. Dude, Travis. Thank God, dude. Because that shit mm. you did over the summertime where you disappeared like a jerk off out there yeah. fishing <laughs> like every right. fucking day, catch a fish. And who gives, dude, what the, fuck? yeah. But you're back. You're back. I didn't have you're internet. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're, yeah, internet. Dude, you're killing it. Very proud of you, Travis, you. dude. You're crushing Thank right you. now, man. You're absolutely Thank crushing. You. Scoot, Thank man, you. good to meet you. I got a nice to meet someday. you. I would love oh, to. Man. We'll do it. Yeah. Patrick Gay, dude, thank you for all this shit. You know it, man. <laughs> Pat, Pat, are you one of these little windows right here you fucking see right now? Are you still there, Matt? I feel, I'm, I'm still, still here. Like Matt, I love I'm you. still buddy. here, Brian. Oh, like, this is his last words. I mean, yeah, I know, dude. What the? I mean, it's awesome. We gave. I mean, this is it. I mean, BTC Elizabeth. It's all coming to join you, dude. You have no idea what these peppers are doing to me right now. That's prosciutto, baby, right? Prosciutto. They got the prosciutto. Prosciutto. Yeah. But the seeds. The three a.m. Man, look for my Instagram stories at three a.m. I'll be on. You're gonna see a pair. Of, you're gonna see a pair. Of, you're gonna see a pair of fucking feet. <laughs> but uh, thanks everybody. Travis, thanks for having us, man. I love, love it, you guys. I'm fucking. It's a I great outro, it. brother. Much love to you, BTC. <laughs> I'm out of here. Shut this fucking thing. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> all right, one done. Listen, all right. Who's next? Listen, uh, wow. I thought uh, we were gonna is, talk is about. Is anybody still baits? watching? Yeah, are we gonna yeah. talk about crankbaits or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's all I came here for. No, <laughs> no, no. Another show, another show. This was really good, guys. We don't, we, we didn't got to go. I think our longest live was almost seven hours. We don't need to do that again. No, I mean, you are we the only ones? Are we the only could, ones up? No, there's no, no. two forty, two fifty, two fifty. Dang, that Dang. Almost, that almost requires oh. another drink. No. Sean, I said there's 325 viewers. I know it yeah. depends on Facebook. There's more too, but uh, think yeah, about yeah. it, dude. We're three and a half hours in. We could be on. We could be close to Oneida by now if we left the house at three True. three hours ago. That's True. how I look at this shit. Not me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Favorite crankbait. Right. Um, somebody wants. Wait a minute. Somebody wants to know what somebody's favorite crankbait is here. Eighty-four Neil Bone. Well, <laughs> oh, well before, let's let's talk about it. I'm gonna go first. I I do like a DT six. That's that's a good crankbait for me. Eric, what's your favorite crankbait? Oh, I like the oh. blitzes too. I'm sorry, but go you ahead. No, you can't ask me that question. It's impossible for me to answer. All right, scooter, what you got? I'm out. I mean, uh, Travis, I actually probably year in and year out. Last couple of years, a DT six has really paid off. Good, good, Matt. Yep. That little black label cliff paste slim. Ooh, I like it. That's the good one. All right, Ben. Oh, 
I guess I could probably say that flat 75, six cents. But day in and day out, I mean, the crush, the little crush 50 square bill works all year. So mm-hmm. not just one deal. So Mark brings up a deal. We used to play this game. Let's play this game and we'll end this this live stream. Uh, I always ask my guests, if you if you had to identify as a specific bait, what would it be? Great so question. So I'd like to do that real quick because uh, Scooter hasn't ever heard this question before. Yep. Scooter, what do you identify as? Excuse me? What do you <laughs> identify as? A fishing lure. As a, a bass fishing, fishing lure. lure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It would have to be a whopper plopper. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. He's on top. It makes a lot of noise. Right. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like it. Anyway. That was good. That was good. That was real good. I love Hanger. it. Oh, we're Hanger. still going with this. <laughs> oh yeah, you, I, I want to hear Ben too. Ben, okay, you- I didn't want to put anybody uncomfortable. I, I just well, no, you got to do it. This is awesome All right. because your son's on the line. Let's go. All right, Matt. This is the toughest question I've ever. <laughs> I mean, do you have one, Milliken? Are yeah, you thinking what still? What else to answer? Because Whopper Plopper was a, a really solid answer. Yeah. One that was You're like, that. Me and like I kind of want to say finesse jig, but then I feel like I might regret that. <laughs> well, I was going to say a beaver, but that would be the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hold on. Matt, you identify as a finesse jig? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else to say. The show is over. Drop the mic. <laughs> Ben's a beaver and Matt's a finesse jig. I mean, with a crinkly cut skirt. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a very versatile offering. Hey, listen, dude, if it came to your head first, it's what you are, man. Don't it fight it. Have to, it doesn't have to be sexual. It doesn't have to be sexual. You can fish it on 10-pound test and 20-foot of visibility. You can also power fish it. You can skip it around the docks. <laughs> I throw it on 60-pound braid if it makes you feel better. Yeah, you there you go. You <laughs> yeah. You're a plopper plopper. No, are we no. plopper plopper. <laughs> are you what are you about a size 90 scooter or what? I mean, looking? no one's like no, I'm like 10. Yeah, no big. <laughs> no, you're the 130, dude. 130? Is it the 130? Yeah, monkey butt. Man. And I like the monkey. I like the monkey butt color. It's true. Yeah. I see it. But it's so rashed up, it doesn't even look like monkey wait a, butt. Anymore. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. That's, oh oh no. Oh, oh there no. It she's in the she's in the house. I can't there fit the whole rod in there, but there it is. Good night, man. There it's is, scarred up. Man. It's about to like take on water from the yeah, it's, got, it's got its own rod. Mm-hmm. It just stays tied on. A, like a, te- a Texas rigged beaver or like uh, <laughs> a, 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 a punching rig. I would say something kind of in the middle, like a flipping hook, but <laughs> not like on braid. More like like a twenty pound floor. You can skip docks with it or flip a brush pile or yeah, I should have gone with too. Uh, so no, no pivot head or anything like that. No, but not the I, small that beef. Was my first thought. I don't know if that's my final answer. All right, you can keep. <laughs> it. Oh, we get to, if we get to change <laughs> answers, I'll take advantage of that. I got uh, questions, <laughs> Matt. What color skirt are you wearing? Um, <laughs> I just, I just like a, like a, like a brown. Depending if I mean, if I feel a little spicy, I might throw a couple orange strands in there. <laughs> All right. I mean, just it's a very versatile, it's a versatile offering. Like no one's intimidated by a finesse jig, but no one like, no one like thinks doubt of you for being a finesse jig. Right. No, I've yeah. thought about this way too much over the last minute and a half. No, that's that's a really good point. I, um, damn. It, it, you could put a bunch of different tray. You could make it like super slant. Like you can put a little bitty trailer on. You could put a bigger trailer on. You can fish a deep, shallow. Mm-hmm. Like bit. I mean, you could technically win on it, but it's a good good way to get bit. Wait, are we talking about like um? Do we emotionally connect with the bait? Yeah, like basically fishing that's all we're bait? talking about. How you identify like what is your if you could be one with the bait, 
you know, if you can put yourself down there while that bait's working back to the boat, you, you yeah, see. Yeah, no, I'll yourself. just, I'll own it. I'll own it. I'll own it as a, as a finesse jig. Okay. Yeah. It could be a little tiny submersible on the back of the bait, moving the, 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 the jig. I'll go, but, but I'll go, I'll go uh, an 11 16th finesse jig. Hmm. 16th. I would, I changed my answer. What do you okay. <laughs> I would be. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> then I, can I take your beaver? I want to be the beaver. I would be a magnum biffle bug. A magnum. Oh, snap. <laughs> On a swing head. Wait, With a rattle? Head. Are you throwing no, a rattle? No rattle. No rattle. No rattle. He's silent. Silent but violent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm kind of a big guy. Coming in quiet. Broad yeah. shouldered, so I like the magnum aspect of it. Yeah. And uh, but it's kind of subtle, you know. Yeah. Actually, so, we we probably I probably won more money on that bait last year than any other bait on a swing head. That's so really? cool. Offshore, yeah. Wow. Like, uh, that's way better than a finesse jig. How are you retrieving that? So is, it, than a is, it, is it a continuous uh, retrieve? Yeah. We, no. we don't fish it that way. We fish it super slow and methodically on uh, hard bottom breaks. So you stop like you worm it. Oh, yeah. Slow. Really? It works. That's the best way, Matt. That's the best way. I mean, I chucked that thing on like a seven to one in a foot and a half of water. Yeah. Yeah. You're down in the Oklahoma area. That's the yeah. that yield down there. Yeah, like three quarter ounce and two foot of water, just do 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 do. Like slow drag and stop, and it's just something about the the bait being able to to plane out horizontally on the bottom and have the natural flow and movement. I've had my ass whooped by my my co angler, my my tournament partner, so many times before that I started throwing it a lot. But you find a hard <laughs> bottom, um, it, it, it's killer. And that can be in three feet of water or 25 feet of water, but any type of hard bottom break, especially channel swings, stuff like that, rock piles, that's our deal. That's awesome. Hmm. That's awesome. Very cool. Eric, final answer. Final you would answer. never you would never be able to do that. No. No. Nope. You'd be dragging no. out else weight behind the boat. <laughs> what? No, he'd be able to drag that football like that. Uh, that, <laughs> oh, that, 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 that damn thing would be behind the motor doing that shit. Oh, no. with you, you mean? Oh, <laughs> yeah, the way you pitch, yeah, I couldn't slow nothing down, man. That's why I got to do a bomb shot, man. I got a power you, you shot. You better man. cast up in front of the boat. It's got yeah, to get quick. 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 Yeah. Were we, were we relating to ourselves on that? Was that a thing? That was a thing. That was a very good thing. I like, I like, to, know, I like to know how a one point five would feel crashing through the rocks. That would be pretty, be pretty painful, probably. Yeah. Uh, if you were Eric, point I, I'm just going to answer. Eric uh, <laughs> identifies himself as a June bug crankbait. We all know that. Uh, and I mean, it is what it is, Eric. It could be that week it's a June bug crankbait. This week it's the chatter fucking leech. Next week it's the, you know, it's the nasty little bomber in here. I don't know, man. I just, I'm all over the place, bro. Which I'm one gonna... is it? Which one Let's is what? Let's see it. I want to see. Which one did you paint June bug? I painted, I painted a bunch of them June bug. This is a DT4. This is a DT4. This is a uh, OG minus one. I got to have some of Ben's glasses so I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the X. This is the original one, man. This is the X caliber 1.5. I've been oh, found yeah. out with some Gamakatsu number fours, man. Can yep. I change my answer to the sneaky snake? You could do whatever you want. <laughs> the sneaky <laughs> snake? I like it. <laughs> that's what in I the am. package. It's in the package. <laughs> this is good. Damn, yeah. say, take it out of the package. <laughs> no, I dare, I'm I'm I dare you. I dare this you. Is I've never seen. I saw this. I had to have it, man. It had two yeah, colors. Man, yeah, I got to read this to you. All right, here you go, man. It says, the sneaky snake is better than Rapala. Rapala. And it's new, unique, patented design. Dries both fresh and saltwater fish crazy. Here you go, man. This is this lure. 
was a result of 25 years of professional fishing experience and is designed to imitate the unique motion of a lizard or a small snake. Hmm. This lure could be used for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, northern pike, pickerel, walleye, yellow perch, white perch, muskies, and all species of trout. For saltwater, weak fish, striped bass, and mackerel. All right, using a spinner casting rod, cast the sneaky snake. Jiggle two or three times. This will give the appearance of a crippled or injured lizard or snake. Then reel slowly and sneaky snake automatically retrieve in a snake-like motion, leaving a natural wake. Work out your own technique, dude. That's what it says, not the dude part. If necessary, you can adjust the flow of the lure by bending the front eye or the loop left to the right. I mean, are you kidding me? If it weren't for the shitty paint job, this might have been the next big thing. Sneaky snake, Travis. I'm throwing this. I'm okay. throwing it. I'm, I'm going to paint this mother up in my basement. I'm going to put enough. some. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm throwing it. Fair enough. All there right. Listen, is. guys, I, I appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight. Awesome show. Seriously, everybody here, great job. Right. Good stuff, man. Man. What else can you I, say? I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks yeah, a lot. I did too. Yeah, thanks, thanks Travis. Man. Yeah. Good you, stuff, guys. Yeah. You need one of these. I tangers. just I just want to say I identify as the Guggen Slim Shake. <laughs> it was just laying right here, bro. I had to pick it up. Good, man. How'd you get your How'd you get your hands on a Guggen Slim We got to talk about that for the TRS bait of the week in two weeks. Oh, I got one of those bags too, man. They don't pay <laughs> me to talk about that thing, but I will. I don't know. I just go along with it. Yeah. Thank to. you, gentlemen. Appreciate <laughs> it. All right, Ben. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Ben. Yep. All right. Yep. All right, guys. Same here, Ben. Until Thanks, next time, we'll you. see you on Peter. the water. Yeah, I'm not going to do my intro. This is a good intro. Pulling for you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, man. Me too. Good luck. I like it. See you. Great having you on, brother. All right. I just ended it.